money to navigating a return to the office to launching a successful side hustle, we're going to walk you through it. Right now, every penny counts as we see prices spike on many everyday items. But I have some tips for how to plan, spend, and save your money wisely so that your dollars go further. United States of sticker shock. 8.5% remains a 41-year high. You have to go back to 1981. Inflation climbing to its highest rate in nearly 40 years. A rise in consumer prices last month at an annual rate of 15%. And just like then, these days, Americans taking a big hit where it counts, their pocketbooks. Every week is something new. It's beef prices, it's produce, it's avocados, it's takeout containers. Now it's fuel. Every time you go and shop, every like a price of something has gone up by so much, it's insane. The average household will now spend an estimated $327 more per month to cover the soaring costs of everyday necessities, from gas to groceries. But there are some things you can do to help keep your family's finances in check. Start with making a budget. Know how much money your household earns and spends each month. Then look for ways to save. We can't control how much higher inflation will be, but we can control how much we spend. When it comes to debt, know who you owe and how much, along with the interest rate. Experts say if you have multiple loans, consider paying down the one with the highest interest rate first. With mortgage rates topping 4% for the first time since 2019, homeowners who want to refinance should do it now, not later, as the Federal Reserve has promised to raise interest rates to combat inflation. You might be in a better situation to lock yourself into a mortgage that you can afford long term. Despite a recent cost of living boost to Social Security benefits, experts also suggest planning more for the future so you don't outlive your money. Try to fund and add more on a tax deferred basis into a Roth IRA, a traditional IRA 401k. And no need to let inflation stop your family vacation. If you do a little smart planning with points and miles, there's a lot that you can do without really breaking your budget. Experts also told us when it comes to making big investments like a car or a new computer, even though prices are higher, think about your personal situation and how essential that purchase is for your day-to-day -day life. Is it something you really need? Even though it is a good time to cut back on spending, make the best choice for your needs. From mortgages and car payments to student loans and credit cards, some debt can actually help you achieve the American dream. But as bills pile up and prices soar, that debt can also add up. This morning, money-saving lessons from a woman on a mission to become debt-free. Like baseball and apple pie, debt has become a slice of American life. The average American carrying a total debt of more than $96,000. I have a total debt of around $67,000, and that feels terrifying and like I want to throw up. Francie Webb, a doula and small business owner in Virginia, says she couldn't always speak so candidly about money, even avoiding the topic with her husband, Leo. She's opening up to remove the stigma. She racked up nearly $120,000 thousand dollars in debt after using credit cards to pay for family bills including rent and her daughter's preschool why do you think people carry that embarrassment when it comes to finance and debt there's a lot of shame that comes with it um for me it's like i did it wrong it's like well i screwed up and this is the reminder how do you move past that feeling understanding that that's just a story that i make up about myself like if i'm there saying i screwed up and it's really like, no, and I was doing was taking care of my family and like making a choice that worked for right then. Once Francie and Leo created an open dialogue about their finances, they began tackling their debt together, using a budgeting app and working with a financial advisor to help them prioritize their spending. And it started with sweating the small stuff. When the kids lose the remote control yet again, Francie tells Leo to press pause on buying a replacement. He's like, can we afford to spend 20 on that? And it's like you feel that shame comes back when you're like, what, I don't have $20 to buy an extra remote? But then you step outside of that shame and you're like, wait a second, is this actually what I want that $20 to do? Or would I rather have that $20 in my vacation fund? How hard was it to adopt these new habits? Really freaking hard. <laughs> Francie says she and Leo stopped using credit cards, and in just a year and a half, they knocked down nearly half of their debt. Recently, inflation costs prompted them to adjust their repayment strategy. 
I've actually called each of my credit card companies and negotiated a lower minimum payment. What that means is when there's extra to put toward debt, rather than paying towards that higher minimum payment, I can then be like, no, my car is at $2,700. Let me throw $250 towards that. Financial advisor Kristen Merrick doesn't work with Francie, but she says it's usually better to pay down credit card debt than car loans because of the high interest rates. What's the number one piece of advice you give people when they come to you and say, I want to start chipping away at my debt? You have to organize your debt. The focus needs to be on the bad debt, which you know already is the credit card debt. Merrick says try to consolidate your credit card debt to make it easier to pay off. If you can't, she says pay down the balance on the card with the highest interest first. And when tackling debt, approach it like a diet. Going from being wildly excessive to complete deprivation is really not a great strategy. To stay on track, Francie says she's created various funds for upcoming and emergency expenses like medical bills, home repairs, and travel. Building a future where the only thing she owes is a debt of gratitude for the lessons learned. I have been in debt for the majority of my adult life, and I'm just not interested in doing that anymore. I'm committed to having freedom with money. And like the villain in a superhero movie, Francie's debt has an origin story. It all began years ago when she bought a gift for her newborn niece, then the airfare for nine weddings all at once. All right, coming up, ready to buy the road to home ownership during this tricky time and later taking the anxiety out of the return to work. Tips to help you ease your transition back to the office. Consumer Confidential is coming right back. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> The general election is right around the corner. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about, and you'll instantly get voting rules. See the next big deadline, learn how to take action for your plan, and even help others make their plans. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for November. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. When it comes to housing, many consumers at some point are faced with this question. Is now the time to buy? With mortgage interest rates nearly doubling, the American dream of owning a home can seem out of reach. But there are some questions to ask yourself to determine whether now is the time to take the plunge. From Wall Street to Main Street, all eyes are on the Federal Reserve. Just about everything we buy on credit will get more expensive. As promised, the Federal Reserve is raising interest rates to tame inflation. But that's only inflaming the hearts of would-be home buyers. Average 30-year mortgage interest rates now top 5%. That's up from less than 3% a year ago. Meanwhile, home prices continue their meteoric rise, with the median home price nearly $430,000 last quarter. I was actually considering just getting a cute little single-family starter home. Demila Epps is a 24-year-old nurse in Atlanta who has been looking to buy a home. I kind of put myself into a situation where do I want to buy a house or do I want to just continue renting? That decision made even tougher because the cost of rent is also going up. Nationwide, one- and two-bedroom apartments up more than 25% from a year ago. Demila's rent for her one-bedroom apartment in Atlanta increased from $1,475 a month to $2,055. A $600 increase. I just couldn't do that. That's why I put myself into, okay, let me just think about getting a house. She saved up enough for a 3.5% down payment, about $15,000. But she says she kept getting outbid. 
So Demila put a pause on her home search. So Demila, I want to bring in Winnie Sun. She's a financial advisor who's been listening in with us as you've explained your situation. Hey, Winnie. Hello. Thank you for having me. So Winnie, what's Demila doing right? The first foremost, I love the fact that Demila is comfortable talking about her finances. The other thing is she's really focused on what she can afford and not going beyond her budget. She says Demila was smart to pause her home search and you should only buy if you have a 20% down payment plus an additional 6% for closing costs. You plan on staying in the same home for at least five years and you have about six months pay in savings for emergency repairs. Those are steep entries for ownership, but she says you can save money while renting. To do so, spend no more than 30% of your income on rent. Negotiate a longer lease, maybe two years instead of one, to lock in your rental rate. Get a roommate to offset increasing rents. And if you have a parking spot or space in a garage, rent it out for extra income. And reduce other major expenses like gas by carpooling, biking, using public transit, or downsizing your vehicle. You don't need that fancy car right now because our number one financial goal is to get you into the home that you really want. If you can afford the house of your dreams, don't let the rising rates scare you away. Right now, the interest rate, although a little bit higher than it was a few years ago, but it's still significantly lower than historical mortgage rates. Because housing is typically our highest monthly expense, financial experts say buying can help you control one of the biggest costs in your budget without being at the whim of a landlord. Renting, though, does give you flexibility. And remember, you generally don't have to pay for your repairs. Remember, there are also options for mortgage rates. So how do you determine what's right for you? When he says, do your homework, adjustable rate mortgages or arms, those can work for buyers with a high risk tolerance who don't want to stay in one home for a long period of time. She recommends fixed rate mortgages to her clients because they are predictable and constant. Well, you thought buying was bad. Renting is also very competitive right now with bidding wars over apartments. So how do you get the edge over those other renters? We went to the experts and studied the market to show you how to land the space you need. Between a 3% drop in existing home sales, record high home prices, and low inventory, would-be home buyers are now looking to rent instead. But that's not all. Because interest rates have risen and people are getting priced out of housing more so than before, the rental market is like an average NASCAR driver going at 200 miles per hour. Stacy Esser behind the wheel of three real estate offices in New Jersey. She says right now, landlords are in the driver's seat. In May, the median monthly asking rent in the U.S. surpassed $2,000 for the first time climbing 15% year over year. The city seeing the biggest increases, Austin, Nashville, Seattle, and Cincinnati. And landlords have the luxury of selecting the tenant that they want. From offering to pay more each month to penning pick me letters, renters trying to unlock creative ways to make a deal, like in this classic episode of Friends. There's a whole table of mini muffin baskets. Which one did you send? The small one. <laughs> You, you, you actually thought that basket was going to get you the apartment? Well, yeah. While Danielle Schwartz didn't need mini muffins to secure the apartment she shares with her eight-year-old daughter, she says she did have to meet in person with her landlord, who already had other offers. I had my credit check. I had references readily available. I was also willing to provide future data checks for each month. Schwartz says she also brought her daughter to the meeting. Just wanted to know a little bit more about me, my job. He knew we didn't have pets. A major selling point for some landlords, according to Esser. If you do come to the table with a pet, you might offer to increase the rent by a certain amount because you're limited to how much security deposit you can give a landlord. Other ways to stand out, show pictures of your current home so your future landlord can see its condition and find ways to connect with the landlord when you first see the space. Maybe you notice that the landlord has a vegetable garden. If you write them a love letter and include in that your love for that same thing and that you're gonna take care of their precious garden, that little thing will set you apart from the people behind you. Esther says also prepare to move quickly. Know your credit score, have the documents you need to qualify, boost your application with references, and don't leave a messy digital footprint if you want to be the tenant who comes out on top. You're babysitting somebody's precious house or their apartment. So if you have some crazy social profile of 
house parties and fun that it seems a little bit reckless, I would recommend you sort of clean that up. The tenant we spoke with in our piece, Danielle Schwartz, says despite the current market, she just bought an apartment. And when she told her landlord she didn't plan to renew her lease, her current unit rented within a week without even hitting the market. All right, when we come back, the app that's helping some workers avoid burnout and putting some control back in their lives. And later, are you looking to make some extra money? What you need to know before starting your side hustle. Consumer Confidential is coming right back. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We were witness to history, and I know we felt so privileged and so touched to be there. Josh had a pretty good season last year. Yeah. Was, is there a part of you that takes a little bit of credit for it? Yeah, of course. Oh. Oh. The general election is right around the corner. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about, and you'll instantly get voting rules. See the next big deadline, learn how to take action for your plan, and even help others make their plans. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for November. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to go really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. With summer heading into the rear view, many companies are requiring employees to come back into the office in person at least three days a week. That means getting reacquainted with long commutes, lunch at your desk, and those in-person meetings. Experts say the best way to adjust to the new, new normal is to take it slow. For millions of Americans, the end of summer could also be the end of working from home. But after two and a half years away from the office, what will it look like now? It's a common theme on TikTok. Come back to the office, they said. Experience our culture, they said. And for many, a source of anxiety. So great to see everyone. It's so great. I'm so relaxed. I recommend that everyone temper their expectations about going back to work because one of the dangers is to think that you're going to go back to the way things were. You're not going back in time, right? You're going back to where we are now. To reduce stress, experts say plan ahead. Talk to your boss about childcare and other accommodations you need, like flex hours. Map out your commute and parking. Choose your outfit and pack your work bag the night before. And bring food in case your favorite coffee or lunch spots have closed. Some companies like Airbnb have fully embraced remote work, while others have adopted a hybrid model. But there's a wide gap between what employees want and what some companies are pushing for. A recent study found more than 31% of workers who can do their jobs from home would prefer to avoid the office forever, while 27% of employers say that should rarely or never be the case. The key, experts say, is flexibility. There really isn't a one-size-fits-all approach when it comes to how and when to bring employees back. There's no one-size-fits-all approach to, to bringing employees back. We are in an on-demand digital environment where customization is expected by the younger generation of workers already. So we need to really think about designing work for where they are. And the only way we're going to do that is to listen to them and to understand them and not impose old models onto them. 
Workplace consultants say it is important for employers to consider what they hope to gain by bringing workers back to physical cubicles, and they should adjust accordingly. For example, people who have work that requires a lot of focus, they might want to come in on a Monday or a Friday when fewer people are in the office, while those who want to take in-person meetings, learn from senior staff, or collaborate, they could come in midweek. Now for a way for people to make extra money and avoid burnout while also filling a critical shortage in the medical industry. Since the pandemic, medical professionals have been leaving the industry in record numbers. But when it comes to finding nurses, part of the answer may be in an app. A newly released workplace survey of more than 11,000 nurses found more than half said they are stressed, frustrated, exhausted, and overwhelmed. A record number of healthcare workers left their jobs during the pandemic. We do have a staffing crisis. Katie Boston Leary is a nurse with almost 30 years of experience. She's now the director of nursing programs for the American Nurses Association. How is this nursing staffing shortage affecting patients? Oh, it's a public health issue. We're seeing um, a slow deterioration of how care is delivered. You're seeing services that are being temporarily suspended because they don't have nurses to cover units. But an app, ShiftMed, is helping to alleviate some of those staffing shortages. It connects screened and verified medical professionals with temporary jobs. They're a leader in a growing industry of app-based work for medical professionals. Jessica Constantine's workday starts like this on her phone looking for a shift to pick up. She's a certified nursing assistant who works when she wants and where she wants using ShiftMed. I'm a mother as well, so I can look on the app and pick whatever I like and match it with my kids' schedule. Jessica started working full-time with ShiftMed in March after years working a traditional schedule. She says she gets paid the same, sometimes more, through the app, and it's a lot more flexible. I can work 16 hours on Sunday, I can work 16 hours on Saturday, work eight hours on Monday and I'm done. Hi, Jessica from ShiftMed. Today she's working at Insight Memory Care, a facility in Fairfax, Virginia that specializes in patients with Alzheimer's. Let me walk you around a little bit. This and is her first time at the facility, oh, wow. so it begins with an orientation. This is the nurse's station. She's quickly up to speed and helping the patients. It's 117 over 77, you go girl. <laughs> She says gigs where she gets to work with the elderly are her favorite. What are you reading today? Uh, Daily Chronicle. Morning, Patricia. As the executive director for Insight Memory Care, Anita Irvin is Jessica's wow. boss for the day. Good job, buddy. She says the staffing flexibility from this service helped them stay open during the pandemic. Even if it was like at 5 o'clock that afternoon and I needed somebody the next morning, they were able to fill that last-minute gap for me. ShiftMed also connects home health care aides like Travis Graham with patients outside of a nursing home or hospital. Today, Travis is at the home of Kate Partain. The fresh air yep. is wonderful. Because of a stroke, she needs daily assistance with medical care and basic tasks. Here you are. Oh, yay. Thank you. You're welcome. Travis logs in every morning and chooses his shift. You can work where you want, when you want, what state you want, how many hours you want. And for Kate, it means having someone there every day, even when Travis takes a day off. How are these technologies helping with this crisis? Well, it does help. It's one tool that does help with some of the situations that nurses have because nurses more than ever want to determine when they work and where they're working. Boston Leary says anything that gives nurses flexibility and most importantly, an incentive to stay in the industry is a positive. But she warns this doesn't solve the underlying problem. It does create a stopgap, but it's not a long-term fix. We have to look at the pipeline versus looking at tools to move nurses around because it is a Rob Peter to pay Paul situation. The company says it is growing fast with more than 100,000 medical professionals signing up for shifts at more than 2,000 facilities in 23 states. They say they're going to be in every state by the end of the year. And by the way, the employees are not contract workers. They don't get full benefits, but the company says it does plan to start offering health benefits to all employees in the fall. Well, who doesn't need a little extra cash? Next, turn your passion into profits. What to know before starting that side hustle? Consumer Confidential is back after this. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love the ride. 
This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. A masked killer takes aim and fires. A fatal attraction that leads investigators to turn towards their own. Internal Affairs, a new podcast from Dateline. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Ali Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Well, many of us have thought about starting a side hustle to earn extra dough, but not every extra gig is worth your time and trouble. So we talked to some people who've been hustling since the pandemic started to learn smart ways to turn your passion into a profit maker. Whether you're going out to dinner, paying that power bill, or even browsing the grocery aisle, the price you pay has jumped over 10% in the past year. To offset record inflation, many of us are looking for ways to make extra money. One survey found one in three Americans started or planned to start a side hustle this year. That's on top of the 40% of people who already have a gig on the side. First find of the day, headboards in the back. Furniture flippers Lindsay and Tyler Dobson got a head start during the pandemic, turning their home improvement hobby into a successful side hustle. Look what we just found on the side of the road. Their Florida Flipsters TikTok page now has more than half a million followers. They reveal how they find free abandoned furniture and refurbished pieces to sell online. When did you get the idea to turn trash into cash? So we actually started with a couple pieces just for our own personal use. And then we decided, you know, why stop there? And we started to actually do some pieces and see if we could make a profit on them. And profit they did. Last year, they told us they brought in $3,000. And they're now on track to rake in an additional 10000 And I was kind of shocked. I was like, oh, wow, I guess, you know, people like this kind of uh, furniture. And it really only took us a couple hours of work. And because Lindsay and Tyler only sell to people willing to pick up their pieces, they save the extra money and time it would take to ship them. Experts say this practice of front loading or doing more work up front and before the sale is made is key to making a passive side hustle where you can make money without constant hands on work. Don't overcomplicate it. Mom and entrepreneur Rachel Jimenez has always been obsessed with making money. When I was a little girl, my favorite toy was a cash register. She creates and sells digital products on Etsy using a free app called Canva. And her printable party games and business templates have turned her online store into a passive profit maker. So last year I did 160000 and this year I'm hoping to get to about 200000 She left her job at a college to focus on her Etsy store and money hacking mama blog where she helps yeah, others start businesses of their own what are some of the biggest mistakes that you see people make not doing research first pay attention to what's going on in the world and even what's already popular that can be a clue at what can be popular for you before you start your side hustle do think about what you enjoy doing and research the market using tools like google trends and e-rank to see if there's demand for your product or service do test it and learn from mistakes remember online side hustles require less overhead. You can open a store, set it, and forget it. Don't overcommit or let your side hustle interfere with your primary job. And don't overspend. Find ways to earn cash with what you already have to ensure your profits outpace that initial investment. I would say start with something small, maybe just for your own personal home and see if it's something that you like. I think side hustle mentality is just being somewhat fearless, you're okay getting out of your comfort zone. Something to also keep in mind, side hustle income, it is taxable. In fact, the IRS says if you earn just $400 or more from that side gig, you do need to file a tax return. And filing will be a little bit more complicated because you'll need to fill out a few more forms. So consider hiring a tax pro to help you out.
All right, well, that is our time for now. Be sure to join me for another edition of Consumer Confidential right here on Today All Day. And you can also catch me weekdays on News Now from 12 to 2 Eastern. For all of us here at NBC News, I'm Vicki Wynn. Until next time. Well, hello, a big welcome to all of you watching Pop Start Plus. I'm Donna Farazan, filling in for Carson this week, and so happy to be here. We have a lot to get to today, including Tamara Mari Housley. She has a new memoir out. Plus, we'll continue our focus for Hispanic Heritage Month, a conversation with Lee Rodriguez from Never Have I Ever. And later, calling all Gilmore Girls fans, the show premiered 22 years ago today. Wow. We'll have our interview with star Kelly Bishop for you. But first, Chanel has today's pop star. It's the first week of October, which means we're officially in spooky season. So get ready to hear oh, Thriller yeah. on repeat. Did anybody try to learn this number back in the 80s? Look at this. Oh, yeah. I know I was in my basement yeah. trying to learn it. Mm -hmm. You said it was one of the best videos oh, of all time. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. here's the deal. Well, next month marks 40 years since Thriller's release. Wow. And Craig, to mark the big anniversary, a behind the scenes documentary oh, wow. about the album is in the works. The film will feature never before seen interviews and focus on how the album launched Jackson into superstardom. You might recall Thriller was only Jackson's second studio album as a solo Ooh. artist. Oh. It had seven top 10 singles, including Beat It and Billie Jean. Wow. A special edition of Thriller is set to drop Drop next month with a bonus disc of previously unreleased songs Jackson worked on oh, for the cool. album. Oh, that's so, pretty cool. Okay. We'll be buzzing about that. Next up, the Tonight Show. Speaking of the 80s, last night Jimmy Fallon went totally retro for a special edition of the show. Debbie Gibson, you can't talk about the 80s what? without her. Oh. She said in the roots, or with the roots, and there were some hilarious wardrobe choices. <laughs> and Jimmy even kicked off the show with this homage <laughs> to Flash Dance. <laughs> He's a good dancer. That was awesome. That was really okay. good. Amazing. Now okay. he has to do the 90s. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that'll be Halloween. Yeah. All right, next up, Harry Styles. Even the youngest of fans are loving Harry's house. Take a look at this tiny toddler rocking out at one of Styles' <laughs> recent shows. This is in Austin, Texas. Her sign reads, skip daycare to be here. So, of course, the Grammy winner had to give her a shout out. There you are. Hello. We got you a good time. We hope you're having a good time tonight. Hope you're enjoying the show. If you, if you like to go to concerts a lot, you go to a lot of concerts. First concert, get yeah, Let's go. Talk about setting the bar high for your yeah. first ever yeah. concert, yeah. right? It doesn't get better than that. All right, next up, something toddlers love almost as much as Harry Styles. Waffles and Mochi, the food-loving puppet duo, is back for a new series. It's called Waffles and Mochi's Restaurant. This time around, the little buddies are setting up shop with a little help from some famous <laughs> friends like culinary superstars Pat Malakshmi and Brian Ford, plus former First Lady Michelle Obama. Here's a peek. Our mission, should we choose to eat it, Learn all about food so we can make something super delicious. Woo Chocolate comes from seeds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hello, honey. Mande coco. Your waffles and mochi. You show people how to look at food in new and exciting ways. Oh, mochi. Whoa. I'm sorry. Oh. I did not see you there. <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, it's it takes you all around the world. So fun and educational. Barack and Michelle Obama are both executive producers on the project. Waffles and Mochi's cool. Restaurant mm. hits Netflix on October 17th. Ooh, all right. Finally, that. Shotgun Wedding. Just a few months ago, you guys remember J-Lo donned mm -hmm. a beautiful white gown at her 
own glamorous wedding to Ben Affleck. We weren't there, but we're guessing it didn't look anything like the <laughs> wild reception in her new rom-com action movie with Josh Duhamel. Ooh. In the film, the couple's friends and family are taken hostage <laughs> right in the middle of their destination wedding. The first trailer dropped yesterday, and let's just say it is a wild it ride. Doesn't feel right. It's not all. Is this rom-com? Is this action? Maybe the a combo? combo. It? it looks like it's got all of it. I mean, it's got all the rom -com thriller. I mean, I there be. you go. You there just started you, a new a genre. New genre. Uh, well, wow. they did. Yeah. So look at the cast, though, along with uh, Lopez and Josh Jamel. You have Jennifer Coolidge, Lenny okay. Kravitz. Lenny yes. Kravitz is Yes, it? Cheech Marin from Cousins. Cheech and Chong. Oh, my God. I mean, a whole group. So you can catch Shotgun Wedding on Prime Video in January. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. And of course, there's more you need to know. First up, Pitch Perfect. The franchise's beloved character, Bumper Allen, is getting his own spin-off series. Adam Devine is back in the first teaser that just dropped today, showing off those beautiful vocals. But this time, he's doing it with a German twist. Hey, everyone, it's me, Bumper Allen. I know I might have been off the grid for a little while, but I've been busy putting together a little mashup for you guys. So check it out. You might recognize a familiar face. Or seven. What kind of wire do I need to get this from here to the internet? He always makes me laugh. So the new series called Bumper in Berlin will see Divine's character abroad as he tries to revive his music career after one of his songs becomes big in Germany. I'm looking forward to seeing more on that. And finally, The Voice. During last night's blind auditions, I love these. One contestant took the coaches back in time with his rendition of the Hank Williams song, I Can't Help It. Take a listen. your eyes and that'll take you back decades. That's amazing. That's 19-year-old Austin Montgomery. And no surprise, he earned three out of four chair spins from the coaches. Good for him. Camilla and Blake both agreed the young singer sounded just like Elvis. Agreed. Kudos to Austin. We're keeping an eye on you this season. And that's the latest for you today. Coming up, our chat with Tamara Mari Housley about her remarkable life, career, and new memoir. Stay with us. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love the ride. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love yeah, I love you too. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. 
Hi everybody, welcome back to Pop Start Plus. You might know her from Sister Sister Days or some of her recent Hallmark movies. We're talking about Tamara Mari Housley, who's now sharing her story in a new memoir. She gave Hoda and Jenna the scoop. Tamara Mori Housley has been acting since she was a teenager. Of course, one of her most famous roles was starring alongside her twin sister, Tia. Uh, that popular show, a Jenna and Barbara our favorite. favorite. We used to <laughs> sister. Is it weird to say we pretended we were y'all? Well, we did. Now, after more than 25 years in the industry, she's put her experience in a new book called You Should Sit Down for This, a memoir about life, wine, and cookies. and cookies. All of our favorite things. <laughs> Of course. Oh. And look what she brought us. She brought us some... some yes, I, I thought it was too early to actually have some wine. Okay. It is. Um, so I thought of tea. I tea love tea. Cookies. Tea and cookies, chocolate chip cookies are my absolute favorite. And this is your favorite. recipe? Well, it's not my personal recipe, <laughs> but it's a really yeah. good recipe. There are tons of chocolate chip cookie recipes, but this one is, is special because you have to make sure that it doesn't have too much flour okay. and it's not overbaked right. and, you know, it's, it's, it has that we're, crunch, we're but gonna, also chewy. We're going to dig in. So okay. I like the title. is like you better sit yeah. down for this. Why do we need to sit down for um, this? Well, one, I just want you guys to join me in this mm. book. I didn't want to feel like I was uh, talking at you because mm -hmm. um, I give lots of advice and I have these Tamara-isms in, in my mm -hmm. book. And one of the most annoying things for me just growing up when people kind of give you know their advice you don't want to feel like they're talking mm -hmm. at you or telling yeah. you what to do i just want to feel like you we're know all together here. we're all together we're all learning we're experiencing this journey you know mm -hmm. of, of life uh together and that's mm -hmm. why i want you all to just sit down mm -hmm. with me, mm -hmm. have yes. some tea, have some, some wine, cookies. we love some that. Cookies. Yeah. Okay, so you, I was saying um, before we were on air, you grew up in Texas. Mm -hmm. Colleen, Texas. Colleen, and Texas. Sometimes Madral comes out. I it's love it, girl. girl. <laughs> Sitting That's next why, to you. I love it. <laughs> and y'all actually performed at the state fair. We did. Under like off. big text. Yes. Oh my and, gosh. You're my fried idol. pickles and the oh, yeah. fried Twinkies. Have you had? Oh have yeah. You had those. Yes, I have. Oh my gosh, they're amazing. But yeah. Uh, like in the summer, my sister and I, we were called TNT Dynamite, and I uh -huh. talk about it. Get it? TNT. Uh -huh. Yes. Oh my gosh. Dynamite. Look at all. We were like just explosively I good. Can't. Not really. Ugh. But um, we just had so much fun just doing routines, and that's kind of like how my career. Oh, there's my sister. That's how um, you know our career started. We started dancing, then we mm -hmm. uh, were in pageants, and I talk about my pageant uh, world. It was not for me. Yeah. Um, and then we got on. TV I mean, and then sister, 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 sister. Boom. Yeah. I mean, that was such an explosion. And you know what's interesting? You have this life when we watched you on TV and yes. people probably were like, everything's going. But dating was not a part of your life, even though I'm sure everyone assumed she must have a boyfriend. Okay. She's famous. Yeah. <laughs> How come you chose not to date? Well, um, I, I actually did. Um, yeah. um, but I just I started later. Yeah. So in high school, I was very, very focused right. on uh, my career, obviously, but uh, I loved school. I graduated uh, with honors mm -hmm. from Birmingham High School, and I graduated with honors from Pepperdine University. Amazing. Yeah. So I didn't start dating until I would say, and plus my mom, she wouldn't, <laughs> she yeah, wouldn't like let she us. Wasn't having uh, it. No. We started dating around like the 18, 19, and I didn't truly start taking it seriously until I was actually like 22, 23, I'm and I met my husband, um, Adam, hi baby, uh, <laughs> I, I met him at 20, 25. So yeah, we were, my sister and I, we definitely were late bloomers yeah. in, in the dating uh, world, and it wasn't fun, I will tell you mm -hmm. that, but I did date. I think it's important to date. You gotta yeah. know what you what you like and what you want. Right. You know, um, you. I love the way you talk about your mm -hmm. sister. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We. Like, yeah. Right. Like you. Like yeah. yeah, it reminds mm -hmm. me so much Twins of... Twins are, you know, mm -hmm. very, I mean, we're special, mm -hmm. you know? We mm -hmm. split, yeah. you know, into a, a, a shared cell. history and a shared mm -hmm. perspective. Mm -hmm. yeah. Your sister just announced that she's mm -hmm. going to be getting a divorce. Yes. Does, like, a half of your heart break yeah. for her? Um, you know, I support her. Yeah. So, you know, whatever, whatever she wants, uh, the mm -hmm. Maury's have her back. Mm -hmm. um, I love her dearly. She is strong. <laughs> um, but I know right now she just kind of just wants to, 
you know, just kind of just process it all, take it mm -hmm. all in, and, you know, be a little private about that. Yeah. And, you know, as a sister, you know, yeah. I'm just going to respect that. Totally. You know? Of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. You, you are so, you're like an incredible person. Oh, my you gosh. Have, thank I mean, the, you. the advice that you give and have in this life that you've lived already is I think incredible. I've either been here before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, like you I know. I'm a very soul. old soul. And that's what I, you know, I, I, I talk about as well. I have all this, this wisdom within me. And and I'm finally accepting that that is my gift, that is who I am, and uh, you could be wise, fun, cool, uh, you know, have fun, but I was always the one, like, you know, when somebody does something crazy, I'm like, no, I don't have to do that. See. Can't y'all see what's gonna happen afterwards? Oh, like you were kind of, you were, you were level-headed then. Very. And listening, see, and so listening to your gut. Always, 100%, my, your gut, well, it's another Tamara-ism, but I think you guys Same. all know that. Yeah. But yeah. your gut will never leave you astray. You just have to learn, um, get all the outside noise yeah. out and hear your own voice. How do you do that? Meditate yeah. Um, yeah. and practice it. And we should mention Tamara's memoir is available today. And if you liked that, we'll have even more with Tamara in the coming weeks. Hint, it's Halloween themed. Twitches, anyone? Coming up next, our conversation with one of the talented stars of Never Have I Ever in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month. A masked killer takes aim and fires. A fatal attraction that leads investigators to turn towards their own. Internal Affairs, a new podcast from Dateline. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. in our changing world. Download the NBC News app. Good morning. Welcome to today. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We need to pull up one extra chair at the table. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day, we start our morning so you can take on yours. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. Welcome back, everybody. Lee Rodriguez plays Fabiola on Never Have I Ever. Mindy Kaling created the show, and it features a diverse cast navigating high school. Rodriguez, who identifies as queer and Afro-Latina, recently spoke to us about the show and its multi-layered coming-of-age experience. Play Fabiola. Um, for me, it means a lot because I see a lot of myself in her. Like she is, she's just like she's got a lot of layers. She's got the whole awkward teen going on. She's queer. She's like a woman of color. She has like this best friend group that you know. She's always like ride or die, always down to like for whatever. But playing her, I feel like there was this one experience that I had. Um, I went to um, this event and there was this uh, young girl and um, she told me how much it meant to her like seeing an awkward teenager in high school and just said that like she really resonated with that like being tall and being awkward within itself is like a whole experience so um, yeah just playing her 
I guess I never realized how many different people would see themselves in Fabiola. And so it's awesome and I love it. And I, I've, I've loved playing her. I'm gay. I'm sorry that I didn't tell you sooner. I honestly just realized. Don't you dare apologize to me. Really? I love this for you. And I love this for me, finally a gay friend. It really fits my brand as a theater wench. The season one, Davey has this idea that they need to get boyfriends, that they need to start dating and lose their virginity. Um, and for Fabiola, you know, it wasn't ideal because she didn't really know if she wanted to have a boyfriend. She tried out the whole boyfriend stitch. was weird, very weird for her. Um, and then she sees this beautiful, gorgeous girl named Eve, and she starts having a crush on her. And so it makes her question her sexuality. And so season one, she comes to term that she is gay. And that's great, we love that for her. Um, so season two, she, you'd think that things would get easier after you come out, but the reality is like she had way more questions than she did answer. She was trying to fit in um, to pop queer culture and she just, she just doesn't fit. And I feel like season two, it just goes to show there's no one way to be gay. There's no wrong or right way. It's just, it's, it's whatever you feel. And so that's what I really loved um, about her journey in season two, coming to terms that she can be a robotics geek and, you know, support the LGBTQ community. And so you can do it all. But yeah, the, I feel like it's important because it's, it's just real. It's just, it's, it's real life. It's realistic. Well, I constantly got the question after uh, Never Have I Ever came out. It's like, oh, are you really gay? Are you just pretending to be a lesbian? And I would constantly see people assuming my sexuality. And so it, it would always like kind of bug me because I would be like, well, do, do I not look like somebody who would be queer? Like, do I, am I not a valid queer person? And so I kind of just, and so I kind of just came to terms. And also like, you know, playing Fabiola kind of also helped me come to terms as well, that, that it is such a, like a irrelevant thing. Like there's no one way to be gay. And you know what, sometimes you don't even have to come out. Like it's, it's all up to you. You can come out, you cannot come out. It's whatever makes you feel comfortable. Um, and so I'm so thankful to have, you know, played Fabiola, but uh, yeah, I feel like I've learned a lot and it really helped me be able to make that post and um, feel confident enough to do so. And so it was a really um, big moment for me. I love that cast. They're so impressive. I got to speak with them recently and they were just great. And you can find Never Have I Ever on Netflix. You don't want to miss it. Up next, a Gilmore Girls reflection from the show's matriarch. These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Allie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day. Lighten your load every single morning. Welcome back to Pop Start Plus. We mentioned earlier, today marks 22 years, oh my gosh, since the premiere of Gilmore Girls. The beloved show features fast-talking duo Lorelai and Rory and grandmother Emily Gilmore, played by Kelly Bishop. And to mark today's milestone, we thought we'd look back at our interview with Bishop 
where she reflected on her time on the show. How would I describe Emily Gilmore? I used to say Emily Gilmore is a piece of work. She's um, no nonsense. Uh, she's smart. She's uh, conservative. She has values that are very kind of straight laced. Uh, she's not foolish. She's uh, she's up with current things, but there's a certain uh, value system that she expects people to live by, particularly her daughter. What was my favorite part about Emily? Well. I liked the clothes. Uh, they spent a lot of money on my wardrobe. I liked her attitude. I mean, she was so difficult and demanding and uh, hard to please as far as Lorelai was concerned. Uh, and what I really loved about that whole show was Amy Sherman Palladino's writing, because it's some of the best material I've, it's probably the best material I've ever done. And, uh, oh God. Amazing, funny, smart, on top of it, and as everybody knows, really fast. So uh, that was just one of the many favorite things. I love doing that show. Lauren and I, uh, the day we met, it was like, okay, I could do this. And she and I became so close and still are close. She really is like a daughter to me, and I really am kind of like a mother to her. We don't spend a lot of time you know, talking to each other or texting or anything like that, but whenever we get together, it just clicks right in again. There's just a real love and trust and and pleasure. You know, we we have the same sense of humor. Uh, yeah, she's she's great. I'm I'm really crazy about Lauren. My all-time favorite episode, actually, the one that tickles me the most because it was so different. There was one uh, where. Uh, Richard, my husband's uh, mother, who was a very difficult woman, uh, had passed away. And uh, I found, if I recall correctly, I found a letter that she had written to him the night before our wedding, I think, begging him not to marry me. I know that the timing of this is particularly awkward since you are to be married tomorrow. No way! But your happiness is too important to me, so timing be damned. She wanted Dad to leave you at the altar. She begged him to leave me at the altar. She begged him in writing, and then she saved the carbon. And uh, that sort of sent me off. He wasn't there to support me because he was so grieving for his mother that during that episode I was drinking. There was even one scene where I was smoking a cigarette. I said I called it my the Tennessee Williams episode for me. Who was that at the door? It was Jason. Dad needs to sign something. Uh-huh. I mean she was just out there. She was so un Emily. Uh, that was great fun. I really had fun doing that one. Favorite moments with Ed Herman. I just loved working with him. We really liked each other so much. I know, I know. One of my favorite uh, scenes with him was when we did renew our vows, and he, we danced to the song Bill, and he said, "Today, I mean, that was your favorite, you know, your favorite song, and today you can call me Bill." Emily would tease me, saying, "If only your name was Bill, then this could be our song." <laughs> well, Emily, for tonight, and tonight only. My name is Bill, and this is our song. That was wonderful. You know, uh, he was such a good actor and very generous, very professional, but just a sweet, good man. Why is it still cooking? First of all, it's very intelligent. I mean, if you the smarter you are, the more you get it, and it's fast. And so you got to pay attention. You don't have much time to laugh because you got to catch up with what's going on. Um, it's funny. I mean, it's, it really is a funny show. But what I decided was that there's really an innate sweetness about it, which sounds kind of icky, but it's not that. There's a, there's a decency about it. Um, and one of the things that men started, when men started watching it, which they weren't inclined to because it was Gilmore Girls and all that sort of thing, uh, is that if you look at the male characters in that show, there's no nasty guy, there's no jerk, there's no misogynist, uh, there's no violence. They're just trying to make their way in the world like all the rest of us. And so there's, uh, what there is basically is an innate decency about these people. They're good people. There's, some of them are very strange, but they're, they're good. And I heard a wonderful uh, 
story last year sometime. The very often um, when the troops come back from maneuvers in places like Afghanistan and places that we you know, hear too much about, they very often sit down and watch Gilmore Girls. And I think it's because it's a feel-good place. It's like, this is what America's supposed to be. Nothing like a good Gilmore Girls moment, am I right? Hope you like that one. Another great episode of Pop Start Plus, done and dusted. <laughs> I'll be back here again tomorrow with more things you want to know and you need to know. Until then, have a great day. So long, farewell. When you think Texas, you think beef, brisket, and barbecue. But here in Austin, the state's capital, there's so much more than that. We've got folks and chefs from all around the world who are putting their mark on this city's culinary scene. And in fact, the spices and traditions that pay homage to their families are making Austin a hot food scene. It's really kind of this melting pot of different people, their culture, and their food. The creativity and, and the flavor that they put into the food is really artistry, right? It's really the diversity of food. Like, you can get some of everything here. So what keeps Austin weird and tasty? We're about to find out. It's time to head out of Studio 1A and hit the road for a new kind of culinary adventure. Follow me as I taste some of the most iconic foods around the country and meet the families behind them. Together, we're gonna learn how a good meal has the power to connect us to our past, our future, and each other. Austin is home to over 1,200 food trucks in food parks just like this one. But we're here for one specific truck. We're here for Tony's Jamaican, serving up fine Caribbean fare to Austin for more than 10 years. Meet food truck owner Tony Scott and his wife Kim. From humble beginnings in Kingston, Jamaica, Tony has made Austin his home since 2003, and he has always had a passion for flavorful food. When did you start cooking? How young were you? 10. Tony's mother, Hyacinth, taught her sons how to be self-sufficient, especially in the kitchen. So you learned from mom early on? Yes. What was it about cooking that you liked? I don't know, I like food, I don't know. <laughs> Those skills learned during childhood would help Tony define his career. For nearly a decade, he worked a small beachside business, serving jerk chicken and drinks to tourists in Jamaica. But after 9-11, tourism to the island stalled. So Tony moved to the U.S. in search of better opportunities, eventually landing in Austin. With construction booming in the state capital, Tony quickly found a job as a painter, but it was his homemade lunches that reignited an idea. You're working, you're, you bring in Jamaican food that you made, some of your friends taste and say, where'd this I, come from? I, yes, I cook my own food, you know, and they was like, oh, you should, you know, open a restaurant. And it's been 10 years. 10 years now. The 60-year-old chef opened Tony's Jamaican food truck in March of 2012 and his wife, Kim, has been one of his biggest supporters since the very beginning. What was the first meal he cooked for? Curry chicken and rice, and he invited me over, and once I had it, I didn't want to ask for more. You know how ladies are, we try to eat a little bit, maybe the salad kind of thing, don't want them to know that we that greedy. But it was so good, I asked for seconds. So when Tony says, I want to do a food truck, your reaction? I said, a what? <laughs> I said, a food what? And I knew nothing about food trucks or however, so it was just all his idea. I just followed along. He said he wanted to do something, he had a vision. I said, okay, let's try it. Despite high praise from friends and family for his grub, Tony's business wasn't exactly booming from the start. When you first opened up, was it successful right away? <laughs> no. <laughs> I came out here at 10 o'clock in the morning and I was all here until 3 o'clock the next morning. Mm -hmm. I make $37. Wow. And, you know, I was still happy when I go home and she was like, how much money you make? And I was like, $37. And she break out laughing. 
<laughs> and I was like, don't worry about it. And next day I come and I make 50 something dollars and the next day I make 80 something dollars and I said, okay, I'm seeing increase. Tony taking advantage of the South by Southwest crowds that flocked to Austin in early March. Shortly after the festival, his fledgling business got a big boost with a small write-up. Kim, what, what to you, what was the game changer? What, what put this place over the top? Wow. His presence and his dedication. Your chicken and hot sauce. Now, loyal customers are visiting this hot spot daily, decked out with the colors and vibes of Jamaica. From curried chicken and goat to jerk everything, food fans walk away feeling the island love. In 2018, Tony laid down more permanent roots in Texas. You opened up a brick and mortar restaurant. Were you nervous about that? A little bit. It was well, a little bit. Let me hear. Kim, were you nervous oh, about Oh, yeah. That? I'm so glad you asked me that question. Yes, I was. It was something totally different and from a food truck going into a brick and mortar. I didn't come from the restaurant industry. I came from the finance side. Coming in, I was like, I was telling Tony, I said, I got this. You know, I can run this, no problem. But, oh, no, 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 no. I was ringing the, the red light bell, like, hey, I need some help. It was challenging, but also it was fun. Kim now helping run the business for both locations. Family always mean a lot to restaurant. You know, sometimes she, she would say, you never know. One day it might be just me and you. You got to show right. me how to cut this meat. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day. Lighten your load every single morning. The general election is right around the corner. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about and you'll instantly get voting rules. See the next big deadline, learn how to take action for your plan, and even help others make their plans. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for November. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. A masked killer takes aim at fires. A fatal attraction that leads investigators to turn towards their own. Internal Affairs, a new podcast from Dateline. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. We were witness to history, and I know we felt so privileged and so touched to be there. Josh had a pretty good season last year. Yeah. Was, is there a part of you that takes a little bit of credit for it? Yeah, of course. Oh. Oh. Right here. Just chicken and oxtail. Thank you Enjoy. very much, sir. Have a great day. You too. God bless. Tony Scott dishes out hundreds of plates to hungry customers each day, but he's best known for one Caribbean specialty. My mother is Jamaican. And in our house, oxtail was king. Yes. yes. Oxtail stew, oxtail and dumpling. Yeah. Oxtail, oh, wow. oxtail, oxtail, oxtail. My mom is Southern. And she actually mentioned it to me. I said, oxtail. And she just said it was a beef. So I've never really had it. And then when you first had it? It was delicious. And I eat it all the time now. That's the problem. <laughs> Isn't it interesting that it was the cheapest cut of meat? Now it's considered wow. a delicacy. You go to all these oh. upscale restaurants, oxtail uh, ravioli, oh. oxtail rice, all the, it's now everybody's into oxtail. I know. No, I'm scared to go in a restaurant and not oxtail. <laughs> Does the, the price is so high. Bring on the oxtail stew! <laughs> Tony frequently sells out of the succulent oxtail, and it was finally time to see and taste why. Welcome to the truck, Mr. Hall. Oh, Hunt. yeah. Oh, it smells good. It smells like Jamaica. Oh, hey, hey. This is the oxtail, oh. the famous oxtail that everybody go crazy over. Mm -hmm. And these are like the Jamaican product seasoning that we use. This have a good flavor to mm. it. Oh, wow. Tony's oxtails are seasoned with a spice mix that includes garlic powder, dried onion, paprika, black pepper, sugar, 
salt, and a few chef secrets. This is my product that I make. It's of like onion, it, it, um, bell pepper, um, scotch bonnet pepper. I also have a little bit of garlic in there. So this is like your own concoction? Yes. And then this is another Jamaican product they call Yava Blue Mountain Coffee. Uh, yeah. Well, they say it's the best coffee in the world. Well, right. this is the Blue Mountain product of burnt sugar. Oh, wow. And this is what we pour on it last. Give it that, that good color. Then we just mix this up. Make sure you rub it in properly. You want everything to rub into it. You know, normally, if you take a smell of it, even right now. Oh, yeah. You see, you, you, you can smell that flavor in it and it doesn't even cook. It smells, it. smells good. Right. He then lets the oxtails marinate overnight. Then they're added to a pot with water and slow cooked for several hours. This what it comes out to be. Oh, now we're talking. For you to taste. When I came to Austin. The result, truly out of this world. You see how it fall off the bone. Mm. Oh, yeah. You know, we, we make sure we cook real tender because dental is very expensive. Mm -hmm. And you know, you go to some place, you have eating that meat and you have to be here to get it off the bone. You don't do that when you come here. Good thing Tony feels like talking. I'm too busy eating. And it doesn't stop with the oxtails. Oh, is it, Mr. Hall? That's fantastic. This is curry goat right here. Taste that. <laughs> this is the jerk pork. Oh, jerk pork. I've never had jerk pork before. Oh. And that's also oh my. my homemade jerk sauce that I made. Whoa. Okay, this is the famous curry chicken. And this is the carrot. Oh, that's so at least I can say I have my vegetables today. Yes. Look at how tender that chicken is. Tony also serves traditional peas and rice, which brought on a wave of nostalgia. This is black bean. When you open that pot, I thought, wait a minute. Yeah. This is my mother's peas and rice. This is great. And just when I thought I'd had enough? Wait a minute, I, I, I noticed. These are beef patty. I gotta try that. Oh, that's a great crust. As a reminder of how far Tony's love for cooking has taken him. If you look up here, you'll see these little pots. Uh -huh. This pot right here is when I just started out. This is what I usually cook rice into. Wow. The reason why I keep this uh -huh. pot to show people is where Tony's Jamaican food is coming from. Mm -hmm. So what would you tell people who are thinking they've got a dream, they want to start something like you did? What would you tell them? First, you have to motivate yourself to do it. And never give up on your dream. My mama always tell me, don't make nobody tell you you can do nothing. Tony, thank you so much. It's this a pleasure, Harley. It, it, it is nice meeting you. It feels like I'm back in Jamaica. I'm glad you have that feeling. Everything but, gonna be all right. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hallie Jackson now weekdays at five on NBC News now for breaking news in our changing world. Download the NBC News app. A masked killer takes aim at fires. A fatal attraction that leads investigators to turn towards their own. Internal Affairs, a new podcast from Dateline. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The general election is right around the corner. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about and you'll instantly get voting rules. See the next big deadline, learn how to take action for your plan, and even help others make their plans. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. 
So it's time to get planning for November. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. We were witness to history, and I know we felt so privileged and so touched to be there. Josh had a pretty good season last year. Yeah. Was, is there a part of you that takes a little bit of credit for it? Yeah, of course. Oh. Oh. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Just a few miles from the hustle and bustle of downtown Austin is Mekon Bistro. It is a spot that's loved by locals and tourists alike for its Vietnamese comfort food. Who's the better cook uh, in the family? Um, I'm not going to even bother asking my mom about that because my mom is hands down the best cook. <laughs> Chef Will Hyun and his siblings opened Mekon Bistro to honor their mother, Anne Hang. A refugee who fled Vietnam after the fall of Saigon, Anne working tirelessly to provide for her family in the United States. She took a chance to travel across the ocean with nothing in hand working ever since she's been over here, working from morning to night uh, and still provide us with a hot meal every day. When Macon first opened, Will hoped that his mom would finally stop working, but Anne had other plans. Technically, she's retired, but like I said, she, she would not stay home. Anne's passion for food starting in her home country. In 1972, Anne married Kia Huynh. They had four children in Vietnam. Anne turning to cooking to help support the family. This is my dad and my mom right, right before the fall of Saigon. When the Vietnam War ended, the family was looking toward a better future in their homeland. But in 1975, the Viet Cong began to invade Saigon. Anne's husband fled the city first, Will leaving when he was just seven years old. It was scary. We left separately, uh, me with my uncle and my mom with my three sisters that came a year later uh, because if you get caught, you were thrown in jail. Luckily, we made it out. We were rescued by uh, cargo boats, but uh, they rescued us. They took us to the Malaysian refugee camp. Will and his uncle secured refugee status eventually reuniting with Will's dad in the U.S. In the years spent apart from his mother, Will began experimenting in the kitchen with a little nudge from his uncle. He told me that, you know, there's only two of us. You're going to have to do, you know, do your share. So learn to cook something. <laughs> in 1983, Anne made the journey to the U.S. with her daughters. Đi dược biên thì nó đi tàu nhỏ thì nó cũng hơi khó khăn nhưng mà qua được cái ấy rồi đoàn tụ gia đình thì rất mừng. But adjusting to a new country as refugees was a struggle. When we came over, you know, nothing in our pockets. We, we relied on government assistance a little bit. Luckily, she's a great cook. Uh, so it, it wasn't bad for us at all. But growing up, that's how she you know, shows us that she loved us by you know, putting all that love into the food. The family moving from Houston to Louisiana finding work in the seafood industry. But Will wasn't so happy living in a small town. When his uncle invited him to attend high school in Austin, Will said yes right away. I fell in love with Austin. The beautiful lakes, the miles of trails, the music scene. What's there not to love? <laughs> Austin's vibrant culinary scene struck a chord. After high school, Will found work in several restaurants, dreaming of being able to showcase his mom's cooking. In 2015, the entire family moving to Austin. But Anne still wasn't sure about opening a restaurant. Asked her many, many times in the past to do something like that. She's dead set against it. She said it's just way too much work. Eventually, Anne agreed to share her recipes for just one reason, her family. Thích làm với con cái mới mới lên hái hát với con cho con. Chứ giờ lớn tuổi rồi thì cũng còn sống được bao lâu nữa. 
thì lấy về cho con được là ngày nào thì hay ngày nấy thì hết cho con mình ngày nào thì hay ngày nấy thôi. She's, she's emotional because like, you know, she basically you know, she's doing everything for her kids. The first dish will added to the menu, his mom's pho. So pho, you know, at a restaurant is basically how we do pho at home. Uh, when we cook pho at home, it's a big pot that's going to feed us for at least three days. Um, we have pho for breakfast, we have pho for lunch, we have pho for midtime snack, we have pho for dinner and pho at night for snack at night uh, until the pot's gone. With the help of his family, Will created several new dishes. Our menu does incorporate a lot of uh, fusion Asian dishes. Um, and that is because of the, you know, the family business. Uh, my, my mom's a cook, I cook. My sister cooks, my brother cooks. Uh, second beef dish was something that I've tried out. I consider myself a Texan. We love beef. It's a dish that my mom and I collaborated together to, to put out. Basically, just tubes of real nice tender beef that's been flashed in a wok. It's been six years since Macon Bistro opened, and Will and his mom still love working together. Làm ăn gia đình thì cái này cũng như giúp cho con thôi Thì thấy nó uh, uh, tự xúc động rồi mình lấy thì thôi chứ mẹ đâu có biết làm sao giờ Mình thấy nó hy sinh cho con mình được thì ngày nào thì hãy lấy vậy thôi Mình thấy nó xúc động vậy thôi I admire her great The courage it takes just to make that journey And to just stick with us no matter thick and thin She's my hero, she really is my hero I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. The general election is right around the corner. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about, and you'll instantly get voting rules. See the next big deadline, learn how to take action for your plan, and even help others make their plans. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for November. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. We were witness to history, and I know we felt so privileged and so touched to be there. Josh had a pretty good season last year. Yeah. Was, is there a part of you that takes a little bit of credit for it? Yeah, of course. Oh. oh. Using food to bring younger generations closer to their heritage happens in families all across America. And it's happening here at Habesha with a husband and wife team who's using their restaurant to bring their daughters closer to their Ethiopian roots. We want more than anything else people to be familiar with not just Ethiopian food, but Ethiopian culture. My name is Ine Fantu. This is my wife, Salama Bebe. We ran Ethiopian restaurant called Habesha in Austin. When it opened in 2013, Habesha was the second Ethiopian restaurant in Austin. People stay coming in here, we give them the food, they said, where's the fork? Your hands. <laughs> Ethiopian food is eaten with injera, a fermented flatbread made with teff, a gluten-free grain. You'll see a family dining and everyone is on their phone eating and really not enjoying the, the, the event. Not you cannot here. do that in Ethiopian restaurants. You have to use your hands, you can't. Both of them. That emphasis on family is everywhere in Habesha, from the Ethiopian art and decor to Yidni and Salam's daughters, who can often be found studying at the restaurant. I think I was like around four years old when we opened, so like this is like my second home. Salam and Yidni were born and raised in different parts of Ethiopia. In the 90s, they left Africa 
to attend college here in the United States. Yidney immigrating to Texas, Salam to Maryland, where her family owned an Ethiopian restaurant. A chance meeting bringing them together. My dad was visiting a friend, dining at uh, her family restaurant, and she happened to be the waitress. And uh, he overheard a music playing and uh, asked her, hey, where could I get the CD? And she was nice enough to, to grab the CD and hand it to him. But Yidney's dad was thinking about more than music. When he got home, he immediately gave his son a call. And he said, hey, just uh, call her and thank her for me. <laughs> <laughs> when he called me, I was like, I give it to your dad, not for you. <laughs> and then he kept calling me. I was like, okay, I think he's not going to give up. My dad was the uh, one who hooked me up. To me, so. <laughs> they dated long distance before Salam moved to Texas, the couple marrying in 2003. Their daughters, Edel and Azel, are now teenagers. I think like we've always been around food. My mom's always cooking. For me, I love her pancakes. She makes <laughs> the best pancakes. Salam left the restaurant industry to focus on parenting, but Yidney knew his wife's heart was in cooking professionally. What I saw in her was the passion to own her own business. I really want to open restaurant and I love the customer service and cooking. In 2012, Yidney and Salam finding the perfect location for their restaurant. Austin is a, a, a very unique town in that there is people from all walks of life. And I think part of the reason that we are successful is because of that diversity. Habesh's menu honors their Ethiopian heritage with many vegetarian dishes, from stewed yellow split peas to braised collard greens. They also serve more than a dozen dishes with beef. Texas is, uh, has a lot of people that loves meat, so we have a bigger selection of meat as well. And I think my favorite dish in that is the kutfo, or the steak tartare. When it's uh, done right, that's probably the best dish in the world. It's a ground beef and mixed with butter and spices. When the pandemic hit, Habish's popularity helped save them from closure. And I said, okay, this is it. I, I think we're gonna fall down now. And then people, they support us. They love to be here. They send us check. They send us cards. We have a good, good community. The donations from fans kept them afloat until they figured out a to-go plan. Before COVID, takeout business was only three or four percent of our business. And overnight, we had to do a hundred percent of our business. And by nature, Ethiopian food is not take out, so we have to figure out a way to package the food, to market the food. After laying off most employees, the couple had to work nonstop. As the to-go business began ramping up, Edel and Azel pitched in to support their parents and save their beloved second home. I would write down like the orders, like the online orders, and I would like put them in the kitchen and cleaning, washing the dishes, cutting the injera, like folding it boxing up to the orders. They did a lot and they're part of the reason why we're still around. So I'm sorry I get a little emotional when I talk about them, but uh, yeah, they're, uh, they're incredible. They're uh, just a uh, love of my life. One of the things that we instill in them is knowing who they are, uh, where their parents came from, and learning the culture learning the food. Salam is looking forward to a busier future at her dream restaurant. I want to uh, grow this business and a lot of people, they never had Ethiopian food. They had Chinese food, Italian food, or Indian food. So they don't know about Ethiopian food. I'm really proud of her because like she she gets frustrated at times, but she doesn't let that like stop her. A really big inspiration to me. Whenever things get hard, you just keep going. The best part working with your partner is the fact that you're there for each other. To comfort each other when it's down and uh, to be there when your partner needs you. The best part of it, he knows what I can't do. 
he covered. The same thing, he cannot cook. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, she can handle it. With Austin's welcoming atmosphere, it's no surprise that more chefs are putting down roots in this fast-growing city. It's everything from James Beard, award-winning chef, and taqueros, and even home cooks. The thing that makes a food scene good is different cultures meeting each other and being able to influence each other. The fact that anything is possible is what makes Austin such a cool place. One thing that rings true here in Austin, no matter your background or culture, there's room for everyone at the table. Hey guys, thanks for doing this. So good to see you. Me too, man. This is awesome, dude. Look at this vibe we got here. This, this is, is sort of your vibe matches the shirt, Dan. Like, we've got it all going on for you here. It's <laughs> intentional, man. It's perfect. Thanks for having us, man. It's good to see you. I want people to know that you guys are in the middle of rehearsals for the tour, and you flew here to New York, flying right back to Nashville to do this. So I cannot thank you enough. That's one part of it. Number two, I'm going to put the temperature at 103 in this greenhouse right now. <laughs> It's not the heat that gets you. You know, it's the humidity. <laughs> it's what they say. I read it in a book somewhere. It's so true. I want to thank you doubly for doing this. Of course. So Dan, tell me how rehearsals are going. I mean, you were out on tour for three shows, March of 2020. You're selling out Bridgestone in Nashville. It's about to explode. And then boom, everything stops. It's so crazy, man. I mean, you never expect that to happen. We work our entire lives for this. You know, it's a dream to get to the level. I mean, it's just such rarefied air to get to the place where we can do an arena tour. You know, we've had such great support from everyone around us, our team, our families, our friends, our fans, and you get there, we get a taste of it. Like we're all in, I mean, we're looking at MSGs sold out, all these amazing bucket list venues, and it all shuts down. And it was just, it got to our heads a little bit, man. You know, I think everybody, I speak for the music industry, when, when I say it, it's like, we were all looking around, like, do we still have a career? Are we gonna be able to do this? You know, and uh, I, I think the first couple weeks were sort of shell shock. I remember a lot of pacing around my yard, like just pulling weeds, <laughs> doing all kinds of like odd jobs, landscaping, you know, trying to stay busy. And then I think, you know, after a few weeks of that, it was like, man, we, this is a crazy opportunity that we have. There's, you know, blessing in the sky, silver lining, not being on the road for a year and a half. Like, let's, let's make the most of it. So we made an album and, and now here we are a year and a half later, like with a new album, Out to the Fans. Uh, a couple singles that have gone up the chart, gone to number one, that we've not gotten to play live a single time, which is like, that's the craziest thing well, in the world. Because usually when you have a number one song, or you've got a song at the top of the charts, you're out there feeling it. It's a right. tangible energy from the fans singing it back to you every night. But we just, it's like, do people actually know this song? Is somebody, <laughs> is, is it, I don't know, is somebody playing a prank on us? But yeah. here we are in rehearsals, man, and it's going amazing. We're working new songs into the set, and I think, I, you know, speaking to our artist friends, speaking to everybody, crew, folks out there on the road, it's like the energy is high, fans are ready for it, we've waited long enough, and I think, you know, I, I think it just causes us to, to appreciate the moments a little bit more, you know, usually those rehearsal days are grueling, you know, you're in there at 7 a.m., you're working till past 7 p.m., it's just long, long days, but I think we're all looking around, enjoying it a little bit more, appreciating, you know, the people, the friends that we get to spend the time with, and and then it's all that much more worthwhile when we get out there and feel it on stage, man. We've gotten a few shows under our belts this summer and it's yeah. like, I get goosebumps even thinking about it. It's crazy. I had had a baby, our youngest, Ames, he was born two weeks before our Bridgestone shows, which was just kind of a, a wild thing anyway. And was kind of preparing myself to, you know, see what that looks like having a, a young child on the road. And that was the one big blessing in disguise for, for me and my family was just being able to actually be there. And, you know, there wasn't a lot of, I'm sure if we if we look, we can find a lot of positives. Uh, but at that point, it was just like, man, this is really a terrible situation for everybody. And uh, you know, as the time went on, I think it was a learning curve of everyone, everyone just being like, okay, we're in this. We have to figure this out and, and kind of settle in together. And there was a lot of time. I think the biggest helps were just the community that we have there in Nashville and being able to talk and the technology that we had. You know, being yeah. able to get on Zoom or whatever it was, and to be able to still write songs and to be able to kind of help each other cope, I think. And, you know, Dan and I were always constantly texting of, you know, what's going on? What, what are you doing? 300 like, days to yeah, our next yeah. show. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah. yeah, man, I'm prepared. You know, a lot of people, it was like, you know, working remotely and a lot of people were figuring that out and what that looked like with their jobs. And we're just kind of like, there's, we don't have anything else besides this. You know, we can't get out on the road right now. We, we are forced to, to be in our homes. And for us, that was a, 
a difficult challenge because we're so used to go, go, go. And we're you know, preparing for tour and always kind of thinking about tour and can't wait to get out to our fans. And that was just like, all right, you, you have to wait and you have to take right. this time. And at first it was hard, but I feel like we definitely grew a lot in that moment. And I think we appreciated moments from our past even that we had never truly gotten to appreciate. You know, Dan and I would sit down and have talks for, you know, an hour of just being like, man, we, we do need to appreciate, you know, what we've already gotten to do because we are the luckiest guys in the world to have ever been given this opportunity because just to say that we were about to do arenas and then it was pulled out from under us, just being able to say that is incredible and, and realizing that there is, you know, you need to find the positive in that of, you know, thank God that we got here. You know, we actually made it and we're able to be able to sell out these arenas and the people want to come see us and that in itself is a huge blessing. And, just very thankful to the you know, community that we had around us and our friends and our family for helping us get through that and, and figure out what life was gonna look like in those moments in this last year and a half. And I think Dan and I maybe took like two months off of, of quarantining ourselves and then we got back together and it was, I think that first song we wrote was I Should Probably Go To Bed and that was just yeah. kind of where it started right there. We were witness to history and I know we felt so privileged and so touched to be there. Josh had a pretty good season last year. Yeah. Was, is there a part of you that takes a little bit of credit for it? Yeah, of course. The general election is right around the corner. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about and you'll instantly get voting rules. See the next big deadline, learn how to take action for your plan, and even help others make their plans. Voting rules have changed since 2020 and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for November. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Allie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, podcast fans. Ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content. And everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. You guys were very productive. You, okay, we're down now. We got to do something. So you, totally. you dig in on this album. You already had a couple uh, songs written and done, as you say. But what was that process like different from what it had been like in the past? You've been writing songs together for nine, almost 10 years, I guess. What was it like over Zoom? Is the process different? I mean, I think you're used to being in a room together playing and, and working it out. What was it like to put good things together? Yeah, man, there's nothing quite like the camaraderie to being in the room with your friends, feeling that energy. You get on an idea or a song or you write a chorus and everybody's like jumping up and down. <laughs> but, you know, it was a learning curve at first to get on, you know, on a FaceTime or a Zoom and, and try to write a song. But I feel like it was good for us. I feel like it caused us to go back to the basics, how we used yeah. to write songs, just sitting there with a pen and paper and an acoustic guitar and really diving in deep on the idea. Because on Zoom, it's like only one person's talking at once, you know, and one person's face pops up on the camera. So whenever you got an idea, it really you had to really bring it, you know. It was like all eyes on you versus being in a right. room. People are talking, there's music playing, it's you know, it's high energy. You can get away with saying something you might not. Yeah. No, people said. just don't really react. They're exactly. Like, okay, that one didn't land, but that, they're just like just you on the FaceTime and no one says something, it's pretty embarrassing. You gotta gather your thoughts, man. So everybody was bringing their A game and uh, man, I, I feel like we tapped into some of our best material just doing that. I mean, we were in our own world. You could put everybody on mute and kind of just dive in and focus on your own and be in your own space. And I think it was cool. And it was uh, then for us when we made the album and we recorded it, you know, luckily we've kind of always done that just on my laptop for better or for worse. I apologize <laughs> to the fans out there. I wish you guys would do it more pro. It's like, man, we just always did demos on my laptop. And that's kind of how we first got going. We were just two guys who loved country music, moved to Nashville. We wanted to write country music, whatever that looked like, whether it was for ourselves or for other artists. and. We just did these demos, you know, whatever, playing whatever we could, just whatever guitar had a couple strings on it. And we would <laughs> put a demo down and then, you know, we started walking around town and people were like, we like these songs. Do you ever think about putting them out? And we're like, I mean, maybe, I guess. Do you have a band name? I, I'm, I guess Dan and Shay, you know, and that's kind of how that came about. But I think uh, the fact that we had done that for so long gave us an advantage in this time where we could just kind of camp out in a guest bedroom in my house. I had a mattress, I got videos of it on my phone, you know, it's like, 
mattress leaning against the wall. You know, I'm pulling dog blankets, you know, out of the closet, <laughs> laying them on the floor. Hey, Shay, can you hold this pillow over your head? <laughs> get the first, perfect acoustic. You, know. you would think at this point in our career, four albums in, I was yeah. like, oh, I should get a proper studio. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, feel, I got the best singer in the world here, and he's like, you know, having to hold a pillow over his head to reflect the sound. So it was. Uh, it was funny, man. Some good behind the scenes content on that. But I, I think the fact that it's just the two of us in the room, I mean, putting our stamp on it, I think that, you know, by the time it gets to the fans, they feel it. It's genuine, it's authentic, and it's us. You know, it's nobody telling us what we should sound like, what we should say, what we should do. Whenever it gets to the fans, it's, I, I feel like that's why these fans have connected with this album. I mean, it's just, we left no stone unturned, man. We tried everything. You know, our fans deserve that. The people who have gotten us here, deserve that from us. It was like, if we had an idea, we thought it was good, how do we make it great? How do we mm. flip that idea on its head or take the production, which may have been this direction or may have been this style and change it up a million times until we know that it's right. So I think, you know, having all this time on our hands was just a bit of a silver lining to all of it. We really got to try everything and it felt like making a first album again. For, for, you know, it's like they say you have your whole life to make your first album. Then you got about two weeks to make every album right, after that. Right. <laughs> so it was like we never thought we would get that time to dig in again, and, and we did. And I feel like you know the music. We're so proud of it, man. It's uh, I think it's reflective of, of all the time that we spent on it. And you guys had such success with your last album three years ago with Tequila and and Speechless and all the hits that came off that. As you sat down for this album. Did you feel like, okay, we got some pressure on us now? People are going to be waiting to see what we do next. Can we live up to that incredible monster hit? Absolutely. I'd like to say, like, no, man, we didn't really even think about <laughs> it at all. Yeah. It was like, I mean, that's definitely staring you in the face. Yeah. You know, when you have, and it's crazy to think that it has been three years, which I feel like in our minds, the last year and a half was kind of, we'll say two years since the record. Because yeah. that just was, that was a long time. It was an asterisk. Yeah, it was an asterisk. But it was, uh, man, it, it, there definitely was pressure, but it was good pressure. I feel like the more that you build your career and, you know, I think that that is just has to be the standard. That has to be the, the bar that you reach for. You know, you're not always going to have the tequilas and the speechless songs or the 10,000 hours, but we've, our fans have continued to, to help us grow, and we try to listen to them. Of, you know, being out on the road helps a ton, which is why this last year and a half was very difficult, because you're out there, you're playing songs. We didn't get to play I Should Probably Go to Bed after it went number one. We still haven't gotten to do that at our show yet. And uh, that was a crazy thing, because you can feel the songs reacting as you're playing them live. I mean, you can feel it as it's going up the chart. There's a direct correlation between totally. what's going on kind of, you know, on the radio and just overall all the socials. You can feel it kind of in that moment. So it was definitely a, a bar as we were trying to reach. And we'd had, I guess, you know, three number one singles off this record already, which was, you know, a, as we were writing it, we had had, I guess, two, you know, at that point. And it was like, man, we really have to make sure that we're bringing our A game because if you don't, I mean, we're going to, these are going to be standouts. It's yeah. like, yeah, they had a couple of hits on there, and then it seems like they might have quit halfway <laughs> through. I'm not really sure what happened there, but it was uh, no, but it was a good process because I feel like everyone felt the pressure in a good way. It was more of a uh, of an excitement of like, all right, we have, you know, not having a bar would be a worse situation of yeah. like, all right, we have to figure out what a hit song sounds like. We have to figure out what our fans are going to like, and we had that bar that we could reach for, which is a huge help. I think when you're writing an album, we can look at and, and know what our fans are going to want to hear and. And then kind of just be able to be genuine with it of like, all right, let's just kind of shoot for the stars on this and do everything possible that we can do. And luckily, unlike our last album since I guess the first one, we had the time to do that. Like Dan said, you, you don't have the time to truly put together you know, an album like that. And there's so much that goes into it that people don't think about. And we were on the road and trying to prepare for that and making a good show. And there's so many, and we're very hands-on with that. So we're like trying to design a stage and design you know, a, a tour and everything. So we never really had time to truly dive into an album. So this was a very uh, welcome, you know, I guess it would go off the road, right. but it was a, a nice surprise to be able to have you know, the time to be able to work on that and really dig in. And, Dan could spend two months on a kick drum sound and EQing one little sound. <laughs> <laughs> and we could do that with the songwriting process as well. And that was just, it was a lot of fun because it, it did remind me of kind of those early years whenever we weren't trying to think too much into or trying to get in there and write great music, you know, something that we connected with. Because I think at the core of it, you know, songs that your, your fans are going to like, I think from that, those early years, we weren't thinking about like, okay, what are we gonna, we're just writing stuff that we love. Right. And we're just like, we love this. We were bumping it in my car and like <laughs> blowing out the speakers in my Jeep at you know, two in the morning and just so excited about these songs that we had created and the magic that had happened since we got together. And I feel like that really translated on our first record and kind of continued you know, that. And we're able to do that, especially on this record of just being able to sit down and kind of tell stories and, and talk with our co-writers and really dig into those songs and make sure that it was, it was purposeful and not just, you know, all right, we're gonna, Try to do an album now. We got a month. 
here we go. And so we were able to really dig in on that and just make sure that everything was, was genuine in us. And it was just, it was a very, very fun process. And hopefully we don't have that much time again before we go out <laughs> on the road, but uh, it, was, it was a pretty awesome process for sure. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Love you too. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day. Lighten your load. Every single morning. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. So, Dan, you produced this Good Things this record, right? And I understand you've got a checklist. Oh, yeah. As you go through, like, this is how we're going to make a great song. So what is your process when you're producing a record? Man, my brain is all over the place. <laughs> like, it's like, you know, social media, it's the live show, it's this, it's that, it's, you know. And uh, I think, you know, for my mental health, like, checklists have really helped me. And even as just mundane tasks, like, I know I'm going to make a coffee first thing in the morning. I know I'm going to make the bed. I know I'm going to go for a run. So I put those things on the checklist every day. It's a little redundant, but when I check those off, you know, at the end of the day, I can look back and be like, ah, maybe I did accomplish something, you know, because I think you can get caught in that cycle when you're making a record you're yeah. just spending a lot of time on one thing you know EQing a guitar or dialing a drum sound whatever it may be and you look back on the day and you're like I didn't accomplish anything and then you get in your own brain and you, you feel like you you know slowed the process but having that checklist you know gives me just an objective thing to work towards every day and I just went old school man analog like how records were made back in the day you know you had the board and it was like drums bass guitars acoustics piano lead vocals, background vocals, and all those things just, I think it allowed me to, uh, to simplify the album process a little bit because it's daunting. To make an album, it's a lot of work. Uh, you know, not only us, but our entire team. It's like, there's album art, there's, now there's all these different platforms, you have to deliver something different to everybody, and it's, it's great. It's, you know, it means the music's getting out there, and it's nice that, you know, there are enough fans out there that are demanding the music that, you know, we have, I don't know, that, that we can, put different versions of songs yeah. and you know different videos out to different folks but it's a lot of stuff so I think you know at the beginning of the process it was like all right cool let's keep the focus let's let's draw this out and I you know as it started going as I was like checking away drums all right we're making progress here we, we almost have an album and it was uh yeah I, I, it was such a good feeling and it's never done I know anything in the creative process it's hard to say it's like it's done I've, I've always tell this story but we had a song from the ground up on our second album song was released before the album came out it went number one country radio was like double platinum did its thing and there were still like five little tweaks that i heard in there i was like ah it drives me crazy so every time it would come on the radio no one would ever hear it it was like a little like the smallest little edit in a breath and a vocal i was like it always drove me crazy if i was in the car i'd be hey man how's uh, what's <laughs> driving man? i'm like dude no one hears that i just like it's try to fight if you told me find the things that bug me i for a million dollars i'm like i guess i'm not getting honestly there. when you're so deep in it it drives you crazy but now i could probably not even go back and find the right. things you right. get far enough disconnected from it and you forget about it but uh you know that i went back after the album or after the song had gone number one and i changed those things so it was i got it right on the album so i felt good about that it was a sigh of relief 
Um, so you're a perfectionist. Yes, yeah. to a fault. Yeah, say that. Say yeah. to a fault. <laughs> Shay, do you have a checklist too, or you just get in and you let know, it rip with your You know, my vocals? checklist, I did it for about a day, and then I realized <laughs> that it was making me feel worse about the things that I wasn't doing. Because there's just like one thing, it's just like, get up. And I was like, well, I, I kind of did that. I was stayed in bed with the kids for like an hour. If I didn't could sing like this guy, I wouldn't be in checklist. <laughs> what Dan know? didn't know about his checklist is I'd sneak in there every other day, and I'd just erase one little thing. Oh, yeah, it was right. Venmo Shay. Yeah. <laughs> Venmo Shay, like, I haven't done that. Okay, That's why he has to follow all the things on the board, so I just sneak things in there. Totally. Like, it would yeah. probably work. It, just, it would probably work. I must work. have written this. Okay. I, no, but I, I haven't done the checklist thing, but I... I do, uh, you know, I try to, to mentally do those things. I think it's a very good thing. I, Dan just, he does a lot more things than I do. And so like, it would just not feel as good for my checklist. I'm like, got up with the kids, heard screaming for an hour and a half, you know, like <laughs> ate breakfast kind of at 11, you know. But no, it's, it's awesome. And I, I love being able to see the process too for him. It's like watching that from, you know, the outside perspective of, you know, when we sing the vocals and as the process is happening, you know, I was going over to his house a lot. And I mean, every time I'd go back and this, this guy, I mean, it's like, the thing was just filling up, and I was like, we're going to do this, dude. Like, it's going to get done, and it was a really cool thing to, to see, and I feel like that's a the checklist thing has definitely been a, a, a nice process to watch. Yeah, that's outside, right. Sure. It was, like, not fully committal, though. It was dry erase, so at any point, oh, I could be like, wipe it off. oh, I, yes. no, I, the drums aren't right. I can, I'm, <laughs> so I, next time, I need to, like, do it in permanent yeah, ink or something. Yeah, get you a you Sharpie. For you still have album. that, right? You still, still have rocking, that. Yeah, and I was like, you got to, like, you have to put something over that. Like, it would be so easy for someone to trip. And then that part oh, of history is gone forever in a dry erase board. <laughs> it got tricky with a dry erase board. You like smudge it, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So I was right. hovering. Some of the uh, the X's on the board are a little sloppy. So <laughs> yeah. I got to redo those ones, make those more perfect. This oh, yeah. is the perfectionist. Good morning, Good morning. Welcome to today. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. Yeah, for you. I really like this for and how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. A masked killer takes aim at fires. A fatal attraction that leads investigators to turn towards their own. Internal Affairs, a new podcast from Dateline. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. It's so interesting to hear you guys say that this process for this album was like going back to the beginning. Because I don't know if everybody knows, your fans do, but everybody knows the, your origin story, we'll call it, which is this now famous meeting at a house party in December of 2012 <laughs> oh. in Nashville. And then going back to your house where there was like a truck. Uh, a fort of some kind in the living room. <laughs> it's probably a better way to put it. Yeah, or whatever that was. So what do you remember about that night, Dan, that really Man. led to all this? It's just the 10 year, you know, it's been 10 years since I moved to Nashville, which is crazy, time flies. But I mean, moved to Nashville, loved country music, had a dream, didn't have any money to my name, you know, graduated college, all my friends went off and they were working jobs, making great livings, you know, establishing a career. And I'm like, I'm gonna go try to write songs and got, I had no money, it was like, found this house, had a buddy that I knew through a mutual friend who ended up becoming one of our best friends. And he's written, I think he wrote four songs on this album. So we've stayed friends ever since. And uh, man, it was just anything we could do to get by. And we had this house, we found it. It was like a hundred bucks a month in rent, which you, I don't know, you can't well, even get a meal for that. I'm sure I City. lived in that neighborhood at some yeah, point. Yeah, Barry Hill, man. Okay. Which Barry Hill, yeah. 10 years later has come up. Yeah. It's cool, yeah. cool restaurants, cool bars. Sure. Not at the time, not, it was, no, uh, not 10 years it was ago. a little suspect. Yeah. But, found this house and the heat didn't work the ac didn't work the locks didn't work on the doors like a folded plexiglass <laughs> thing you could reach in 
That's how you got an it, house. It is, but the, the keg in the back worked. There was a keg that, that was... somebody left over, probably a previous tenant. A keg of PBR was probably growing things on the surface, but hey, we were drinking had, it anyways. You had the important things covered. Exactly. The keg the worked. Were definitely yeah. I, I think the first time, so I came in, my, my friend Andrew, that I think I was living with, actually at the time I was, I think I was staying on his couch, uh, my buddy Brandon's couch. We all lived kind of together in this thing. And he was like, there's these, these two guys that are uh, they're having a house party tonight. A mutual friends of, of Dan and, uh, and our friend Andy, who he was talking about earlier. And he was like, let's go to this house party. He's like, you know, they got a house over here in Berry Hill and, and they have a keg. And I'm like, I'm in. I didn't even need to know the details. I was like, I don't need to know their character. Like, they have a keg. <laughs> like, I'm down. Let's go. And none of us had any money. And it was like, anytime there were going to be free drinks involved, we're like, I think we should really seize the moment here, guys. I think we need to do this. Sure, we haven't slept in a week. Let's go to this, yeah. this party. And uh, it was crazy. I, I walked in and I remember getting to the house thinking, I don't know if I'm in the right house or not because I got to the front door and I, the door was kind of like locked. And so I reached inside, the window was kind of did like this. And I reached in there and I was like, this is either gonna be a great time or I'm breaking and entering and I'm going to jail. Yeah. And at that point for the keg, I was willing to risk it all really. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going in. And so we went in there and I remember, you know, Dan and Andy and our, our guitar player now, Justin was there at this party. And uh, it was just a, it was a great time. I think we ended up staying up till probably 2 a.m. And there was a moment where everybody was passing around the guitar and kind of playing their songs. And I was like, I'd like to take a crack at that. You wouldn't believe it. This guy hadn't said a word the entire night. Which <laughs> I, was I, know was a on, I was too busy back at the keg. He, he's completely quiet and everybody's passing the guitar around Nashville style in this tent. We, we overlooked that detail. Yes, that's right. The we tent is in the living dude, room. Dude, I mean, we went to this place called Music City Thrift just down the road from where we live. We bought like $6 worth of sheets. We tented it out. I mean, that was the only way we could stay warm. We had a little space heater. We huddled around wow. it. Wrote songs, whatever it took. And he walked into the tent. He's completely quiet, like chilling, like this shy little guy hanging out. <laughs> shy <We're>, guy. Yeah. <laughs> Which I found out later is not the case. You know, see. We're all singing, and then it's like 2 in the morning. He's like, can I, can I try one? And he starts singing, and I, I was like, everyone was like, oh, my gosh. This is the best. It was the best singer I ever heard in my life. Pulled out my phone. I still have the voice memo of this, and I, like, held it up. I didn't know what would come of this. You know, I didn't ever expect to be sitting here talking to you in New York City and all these crazy accolades behind us. But I recorded him, I was like, and I labeled it best singer ever. It was December 7, <laughs> 2012. Right? Wow. Still, he was doing a cover. and. Uh, the next day, I was just like, we need to write songs. Like, we had both been chasing this dream separately, obviously without much success. We wrote the next morning. I think it was like 7 a.m. Yeah. Don't know why. I think we were still up from the night before. Yeah. I would couple. say the next day, but I think it was that morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was the same day. It. Probably a better way to describe it. We wrote, we wrote two songs that day, and honestly, we haven't stopped. It was, it was insane. I mean, the first song we wrote, wrote got put on hold by a major artist, and it was like, man, up to that point, we couldn't get anyone to respond to an email or you know, take a meeting with us. We were sneaking into the CMT <laughs> awards. We were doing all this madness. And then uh, from there, it was just like, it happened. It was like, it was meant to be. And I, one of the craziest stories about this is we didn't realize this till like a few weeks after we met, Shay had lived in Pittsburgh, like, I don't know, yeah. less than a mile from where I grew up. We didn't know each other. Oh, wow. Like, yeah, you went up it's there. pretty insane, man. I mean, it was like, I was describing like where I was like, yeah, I lived in Pittsburgh for a second. He was like, where at? Well, where at? And yeah. I was like, well, I was over here. It was like near Allison Park and all these places. And he was just like, yeah. He's like, that's where I grew up, yeah. like a mile. That's and it was just wild. kind of a crazy like. And how long Whoa. were you there? I was there for about a year. Okay. About a year or a year and a half. Honestly, I don't, I'm not great with time yeah. nowadays. <laughs> really. Could have been seven years. I don't know. But I was there for about a year, and uh, I just remembered like discovering that and thinking like, wow, that's probably we were probably there at the same yeah. time. And you think about those things, man. You look back and you're just like. You know, those moments, thinking back to that house party, you never think that those are the moments that are going to kind of change your life. I mean, if there was one pivotal moment, I mean, that was it. Meeting Dan there in that house party, and I was just thinking that I was going to go for some free beer. So the moral of the story is always go to go the, to the party. party. Yes. If Gosh. there's free beer, always go to yes. the party. If you're in Nashville, you got to go. Your life you philosophy go. really paid off. It did. Yeah. Okay, last question before I get you out of the greenhouse. Was there ever any consideration at the beginning of being Shay and Dan rather than oh, Dan yeah. and Shay? Dude, it's, it's a great question. I, yeah. I, I don't know how the name came about. It was always just like, we never set out to be a band. We were just two best friends writing songs. We would walk into a place, like a publishing, you know, somewhere that we were trying to get a free meal. Hey man, you want to take us out for lunch or a beer? <laughs> oh yeah, you've got a company card, let's go. Dan and Cher here. Dan and Cher here, oh, Dan and Cher here. It was just like, that was the way it went. But now that I analyze it in reverse, it was like, maybe it was because if it was Shay and Dan, the word N ends with a D and then Dan starts with a D. So there's a little bit of gray area due to Shay and Dan. You gotta uh, like, it's, it's a little more difficult to say. It doesn't roll off the tongue as much having the D of and and the D of Dan back to back. 
We have a whole Damn chart written out if you really want to see it. Yeah, we, you know what I'm saying? We really dove into this. He's another got another checklist. Yeah, he's got another checklist. On the other side of that is is a reasoning. It, it also Shay and Dan just sounds a little silly. I think it's a see exactly. That, you you yeah. tied the two letters, the Shay two Dan. D's there together. Shay and Dan. You're right. It's basically, like because there's weird. Shannon Doe was already a band. So Dan and Shay was. It was everyone just called us Dan and yeah. Shay, and it was just kind of went from there. And also we had had a couple band names that were absolutely atrocious that we will not talk about in front of the country, Willie. Come on. And uh, Come on. there was just I'll one say one because it wasn't our idea. My my lawyer one time like early on we had did this showcase thing, and he wrote down this thing thinking like had an aha moment of like guys. <laughs> you might want to get over here because this is about to be. It took him ten minutes changing. to type it on his iPad. It was too. it was kind of a peck situation where like and it, he clearly I mean it looked like he was writing a one thousand page document and he was just <laughs> writing this thing out and he has this big reveal and he kind of does this with the iPad and we're sitting there we're like oh, like things are about this to heat up it. dude this is like this is our future welcome you know. And he flips it around and it says, school's out. <laughs> and Dan and I, we're just like, oh. you know, I mean, you should have seen the look on our faces. We didn't he know how to react. That day. That's crazy. Yeah, he, <laughs> <laughs> he was, uh, yeah, so school's out did not make the Ooh. cut. Dan and Shay, history was made. That's, That's right. Great. Guys, thank you so much for doing this and for coming all the way from Nashville and sitting here with us on a hot Dude. summer day. You're the best. Thank you for taking thank the time, you. man. Thank you. Well, hello, a big welcome to all of you watching Popstar Plus. I'm Donna Farazan, filling in for Carson this week, and so happy to be here. We have a lot to get to today, including Tamara Mari Housley. She has a new memoir out. Plus, we'll continue our focus for Hispanic Heritage Month, a conversation with Lee Rodriguez from Never Have I Ever. And later, calling all Gilmore Girls fans, the show premiered 22 years ago today. Wow. We'll have our interview with star Kelly Bishop for you. But first, Chanel has today's pop star. It's the first week of October, which means we're officially in spooky season. So get ready to hear oh. Thriller on repeat. Did anybody try to learn this number back in the 80s? Look at this. Oh, yeah. I know I was in my basement yeah. trying. I know I was in my basement yeah. trying to learn mm -hmm. it. You said it was one of the best videos oh, of all time. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. here's the deal. Well, next month marks 40 years since Thriller's release. Wow. And Craig, to mark the big anniversary, a behind-the-scenes documentary oh, wow. about the album is in the works. The film will feature never-before-seen interviews and focus on how the album launched Jackson into superstardom. You might recall Thriller was only Jackson's second studio album as a solo mm. artist. Oh. It had seven top ten singles, including Beat It and Billie Jean. Wow. A special edition of Thriller is set to drop next month with a bonus disc of previously unreleased songs Jackson worked on oh, for the cool. album. Oh, that's so, pretty cool. Got to be buzzing about that. Next up, The Tonight Show. Speaking of the 80s, last night Jimmy Fallon went totally retro for a special edition of the show. Debbie Gibson, you can't talk about the 80s what? without her. Oh. She said in The Roots, are with The Roots, and there were some hilarious wardrobe choices. <laughs> and Jimmy even kicked off the show with this homage <laughs> to Flashdance. <laughs> He's a good dancer. That was awesome. That was really okay. good. Amazing. Now okay. he has to do the 90s. Yeah. Maybe yeah. that'll be Halloween. Yeah. All right, next up, Harry Styles. Even the youngest of fans are loving Harry's house. Take a look at this tiny toddler rocking out at one of Styles' <laughs> recent shows. This is in Austin, Texas. Her sign reads, skip daycare to be here. So, of course, the Grammy winner had to give her a shout out. There you are. Hello. We got me a good time. We hope you're having a good time tonight. Hope you're enjoying the show. If you do you like to go to concerts a lot, you go to a lot of concerts. First concert, get it. Let's go. Let's go. 
Yeah. Talk about setting the bar high for your first ever yeah. concert, yeah. right? It doesn't get better than that. All right, next up, something toddlers love almost as much as Harry Styles. Waffles and Mochi, the food-loving puppet duo, is back for a new series. It's called Waffles and Mochi's Restaurant. This time around, the little buddies are setting up shop with a little help from some famous <laughs> friends like culinary superstars Pat Malakshmi and Brian Ford, plus former First Lady Michelle Obama. Here's a peek. Our mission, should we choose to eat it, learn all about food so we can make something super delicious. Woo Chocolate comes from seeds? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Hello, honey. And Hello, coco. Your waffles and mochi. You show people how to look at food in new and exciting ways. Oh, mochi, Whoa. I'm sorry. Oh. I did not see you there. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, if you haven't seen it, it's it takes you all around the world. So fun and educational. Barack and Michelle Obama are both executive producers on the project. Waffles and Mochi's oh. Restaurant mm. hits Netflix on October 17th. Ooh, all right, finally, that. Shotgun Wedding. Just a few months ago, you guys remember, J-Lo donned mm -hmm. a beautiful white gown at her own glamorous wedding to Ben Affleck. We weren't there, but we're guessing it didn't look anything like the <laughs> wild reception in her new rom-com action movie with Josh Duhamel. Ooh. In the film, the couple's friends and family are taken hostage <laughs> right in the middle of their destination wedding. The first trailer dropped yesterday, and let's just say it is a wild ride. It doesn't feel right. It's not on. Spray him in the eyes. Ah! Won't work. Why? Too many steps. Ah, Don't you let like go! Maybe. So what we're like, is this rom-com? Is this action? Maybe a combo? Of it looks like it's got all of it. I mean, it's got all the things. thriller? I mean, uh, there you go. You there just started you. a new a genre. New genre. Well, wow. they did. Yeah. So look at the cast, though, along with uh, Lopez and Josh Jamel. You have Jennifer Coolidge, Lover. Lenny okay. Kravitz. Lenny yes. Kravitz is Yes, it? Cheech Marin from Cousins. Cheech and Chong. Oh, my gosh. I mean, a whole group. So you can catch Shotgun Wedding on Prime Video in January. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. And of course, there's more you need to know. First up, Pitch Perfect. The franchise's beloved character, Bumper Allen, is getting his own spin-off series. Adam Devine is back in the first teaser that just dropped today, showing off those beautiful vocals. But this time, he's doing it with a German twist. Hey, everyone, it's me, Bumper Allen. I know I might have been off the grid for a little while, but I've been busy putting together a little mashup for you guys. So check it out. You might recognize a familiar face. Or seven. What kind of wire do I need to get this from here to the internet? He always makes me laugh. So the new series called Bumper in Berlin will see Divine's character abroad as he tries to revive his music career after one of his songs becomes big in Germany. I'm looking forward to seeing more on that. And finally, The Voice. During last night's blind auditions, I love these. One contestant took the coaches back in time with his rendition of the Hank Williams song, I Can't Help It. Take a listen. Who's ever alone and knows how much I miss you? I can't help it if I'm still in love with you. your eyes and that'll take you back decades. That's amazing. That's 19-year-old Austin Montgomery. And no surprise, he earned three out of four chair spins from the coaches. Good for him. Camilla and Blake both agreed the young singer sounded just like Elvis. Agreed. Kudos to Austin. We're keeping an eye on you this season. And that's the latest for you today. Coming up, our chat with Tamara Mari Housley about her remarkable life, career, and new memoir. Stay with us. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now.
general election is right around the corner. It's time to plan your vote. We'll provide everything you need to know to successfully cast your ballot. Just select any state you want to learn about and you'll instantly get voting rules. See the next big deadline, learn how to take action for your plan, and even help others make their plans. Voting rules have changed since 2020, and those rules vary from state to state. So it's time to get planning for November. Visit NBCNews.com slash plan your vote today. Today is now a podcast available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day. Lighten your load every single morning. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Pop Start Plus. You might know her from Sister Sister Days or some of her recent Hallmark movies. We're talking about Tamara Mari Housley, who's now sharing her story in a new memoir. She gave Hoda and Jenna the scoop. Tamara Mori Housley has been acting since she was a teenager. Of course, one of her most famous roles was starring alongside her twin sister, Tia. Uh, that popular show, a Jenna and Barbara favorite. favorite. We used to, <laughs> sister. Is it weird to say we pretended we were y'all? Well, we did. Now, after more than 25 years in the industry, she's put her experience in a new book called You Should Sit Down for This, a memoir about life, wine, and, and cookies. cookies. All of our favorite things. <laughs> Of course. Oh. And look what she brought us. She brought us some... some yes, I, I thought it was too early to actually have some wine. Okay. Um, so I thought of tea. I tea love tea. Cookies. Tea and cookies, chocolate chip cookies are my absolute favorite. And this is your favorite. recipe? Well, it's not my personal recipe, <laughs> but it's a really yeah. good recipe. There are tons of chocolate chip cookie recipes, but this one is, is special because you have to make sure that it doesn't have too much flour okay. and it's not overbaked right. and, you know, it's, it's, it has that well, crunch, we're but gonna, also chewy. We're going to dig in. So okay. I like the title. is like, you better sit yeah. down for this. Why do we need to sit down for um, this? Well, one, I just want you guys to join me in this mm. book. I didn't want to feel like I was uh, talking at you because mm -hmm. um, I give lots of advice and I have these Tamaraisms in in my book. Mm -hmm. And one of the most annoying things for me, just growing up, when people kind of give you know their advice, you don't want to feel like they're talking mm -hmm. at you or telling yeah. you what to do. I just want to feel like you we're know all together here. we're all together. We're all learning. We're experiencing this journey, you know, mm -hmm. of, of life uh, together. And that's mm -hmm. why I want you all to just sit down mm -hmm. with me, mm -hmm. have yes. some tea. Some, some wine. Cookies. We love some that. Cookies. Yeah. Okay, so you, I was saying um, before we were on air, you grew up in Texas. Mm -hmm. Colleen, Texas. Colleen, and Texas. Sometimes Madral comes out. I love, love it, girl. Yeah. Sitting That's next why, to you. I love it. <laughs> and y'all actually performed at the State Fair? We did. Under yeah. like big texts? Yes. Oh my and gosh. For my fried idol. pickles and the oh, yeah. fried Twinkies. Have you had? Oh, have yeah. you had those? Yes, I have. Oh my gosh, they're amazing. But yeah. Uh, like in the summer, my sister and I, we were called TNT Dynamite, and I uh -huh. talk about it. Get it? TNT. Uh -huh. Yes. Oh my gosh. Dynamite. Look at y'all. We were like just explosively I good. Can't. Not really. Uh -huh. But um, we just had so much fun just doing routines, and that's kind of like how my career, oh, there's my sister. That's how, um, you know, our career started. We started dancing, then we uh, were in pageants, and I talk about my pageant uh, world. It was not for me. Yeah. Um, and then we got on. TV I mean, and then sister, 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 sister. sister. Boom. Yeah. I mean, that was such an explosion. And you know what's interesting? You have this life, and we watched you on TV, and yes. people probably were like, everything's going. But dating was not a part of your life, even though I'm sure everyone assumed she must have a boyfriend. Yeah, she's famous. Yeah. <laughs> How come you chose not to date? Well, um, I, I actually did, um, yeah. um, but I just I started later. Yeah. So in high school, I was very, very focused right. on uh, my career, obviously, but uh, I loved school. I graduated uh, with honors mm -hmm. from Birmingham High School, and I graduated with honors from Pepperdine University. Amazing. Yeah. So I didn't start dating until I would say, and plus my mom, she wouldn't, <laughs> she yeah, wouldn't like let she us. She wasn't having uh, it. No. We started dating around like the 18, 19, and I didn't truly start taking it seriously until I was actually like 22, 23, and I met my husband, um, Adam, hi baby, uh, I, I met him at 20, 25. So yeah, we were, my sister and I, we definitely were late bloomers in, in the dating 
uh, world. And it wasn't fun, I will tell you mm-hmm. that. But I did date. I think it's important to date. You got to yeah. know what you what you like and what you want. Right. You know, um, you. I love the way you talk about your mm-hmm. sister. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We. Like, yeah. Everything is right. we. Like you. Like yeah. yeah. It reminds mm-hmm. me so much Twins of... Twins are, you know, mm-hmm. very... I mean, we're special. Mm-hmm. You know? We mm-hmm. split, yeah. you know, into a, a shared a cell. history and a shared mm-hmm. perspective. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Your sister just announced that she's mm-hmm. going to be getting a divorce. Yes. Does, like, a half of your heart break yeah. for her? Um, you know... I support her. Yeah. So, you know, whatever whatever she wants, uh, the mm-hmm. Maury's have her back. Mm-hmm. Um, I love her dearly. She is strong. <laughs> um, but I know right now she just kind of just wants to, you know, just kind of just process it all, take mm-hmm. it all in, and, you know, be a little private about that. Yeah. And, you know, as a sister, you know, yeah. I'm just going to respect that. Totally. You know? Of course. Of mm-hmm. course. You, you are so, you're like an incredible person. Oh, my you gosh. Have, thank I mean, the, you. the advice that you give and have in this life that you've lived already is I incredible. I think I've either been here before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, don't think you have I know. I'm a very soul. old soul. And that's what I, you know, I, I, I talk about as well. I have all this, this wisdom within me. And and I'm finally accepting that that is my gift. That is who I am. And uh, you could be wise, fun, cool, uh, you know, have fun. But I was always the one, like, you know, when somebody does something crazy, I'm like, no, I don't have to do that. So Can't you, y'all see what's going to happen afterwards? Oh, like you were kind of, you were, you were level-headed then. Very. And listening, see, and so listening to your gut. Always. 100%. My, your gut well, it's another Tamaraism, but I think you guys so, yeah. all know that. Yeah. But your gut will never leave you astray. You just have to learn, um, get all the outside noise yeah. out and hear your own yeah. How voice. How do you do that? Meditate yeah. Um, yeah. and practice it. And we should mention Tamara's memoir is available today. And if you liked that, we'll have even more with Tamara in the coming weeks. Hint, it's Halloween themed. Twitches, anyone? Coming up next, our conversation with one of the talented stars of Never Have I Ever in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Oh, yeah. I love that too. <laughs> These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. We were witness to history, and I know we felt so privileged and so touched to be there. Josh had a pretty good season last year. Yeah. Was, is there a part of you that takes a little bit of credit for it? Yeah, of course. Oh. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. Love ride. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Oh, yeah. I love that too. <laughs> These days, it feels like the news never stops. So let's get into it. What's happening right now, what it all means for you for an hour every day. It can be hard to keep up, so let's get started together. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back, everybody. Lee Rodriguez plays Fabiola on Never Have I Ever. Mindy Kaling created the show, and it features a diverse cast navigating high school. Rodriguez, who identifies as queer and Afro-Latina, recently spoke to us about the show and its multi-layered coming-of-age experience. What 
does it mean to play Fabiola? Um, for me, it means a lot because I see a lot of myself in her. Like she is, she's just like, she's got a lot of layers. She's got the whole awkward teen going on. She's queer, she's like a woman of color. She has like this best friend group that, you know, she's always like ride or die, always down to like for whatever. But playing her, I feel like there was this one experience that I had um, I went to um, this event and there was this uh, young girl and um, she told me how much it meant to her like seeing an awkward teenager in high school and just said that like she really resonated with that like being tall and being awkward within itself is like a whole experience so um, yeah just playing her I guess I never realized how many different people would see themselves in Fabiola and so it's awesome and I love it and I I've I've loved playing her. I'm gay. I'm sorry that I didn't tell you sooner. I honestly just realized Don't you dare apologize to me. Really? I love this for you. And I love this for me. Finally a gay friend. It really fits my brand as a theater wench. The so season one, Davy has this idea that they need to get boyfriends, that they need to start dating and lose their virginity. Um, and for Fabiola, you know, it wasn't ideal because she didn't really know if she wanted to have a boyfriend. She tried out the whole boyfriend sitch, was weird, very weird for her. Um, and then she sees this beautiful, gorgeous girl named Eve, and she starts having a crush on her. And so it makes her question her sexuality. And so. Season one, she comes to term that she is gay. And that's great, we love that for her. Um, so season two, she, you'd think that things would get easier after you come out, but the reality is like, she had way more questions than she did answer. She was trying to fit in um, to pop queer culture and she just, she just doesn't fit. And I feel like, it, Season two, it just goes to show there's no one way to be gay. There's no wrong or right way. It's just, it's it's whatever you feel. And so that's what I really loved um, about her journey in season two, coming to terms that she can be a robotics geek and, you know, support the LGBTQ community. And so you can do it all. But yeah, the, I feel like it's important because it's, it's just real. It's just, it's, it's real life. It's realistic. Well, I constantly got the question after uh, Never Have I Ever came out. It's like, oh, are you really gay? Are you just pretending to be a lesbian? And I would constantly see people assuming my sexuality. And so it, it would always like kind of bug me because I would be like, well, do, do I not look like somebody who would be queer? Like, do I, am I not a valid queer person? And so I kind of just came to terms. And also like, you know, playing Fabiola kind of also helped me come to terms as well. That that it is such a, like a, a relevant thing. Like there's no one way to be gay. And you know what, sometimes you don't even have to come out. Like it's, it's all up to you. You can come out, you cannot come out. It's whatever makes you feel comfortable. Um, and so I'm so thankful to have, you know, played Fabiola, but um, yeah, I feel like I've learned a lot and it really helped me be able to make that post and um, feel confident enough to do so. And so it was a really um, big moment for me. I love that cast. They're so impressive. I got to speak with them recently. And they were just great. And you can find Never Have I Ever on Netflix. You don't want to miss it. Up next, a Gilmore Girls reflection from the show's matriarch. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day. Lighten your load every single morning.
questions? Ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals plus bonus content. And everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Welcome back to Pop Start Plus. We mentioned earlier, today marks 22 years, oh my gosh, since the premiere of Gilmore Girls. The beloved show features fast-talking duo Lorelai and Rory and grandmother Emily Gilmore, played by Kelly Bishop. And to mark today's milestone, we thought we'd look back at our interview with Bishop, where she reflected on her time on the show. How would I describe Emily Gilmore? I used to say Emily Gilmore is a piece of work. She's um, no nonsense. Uh, she's smart. She's uh, conservative. She has values that are very kind of straight laced. Uh, she's not foolish. She's uh, she's up with current things, but there's a certain uh, value system that she expects people to live by, particularly her daughter. What was my favorite part about Emily? Well. I liked the clothes. Uh, they spent a lot of money on my wardrobe. I liked her attitude. I mean, she was so difficult and demanding and uh, hard to please as far as Lorelai was concerned. Uh, and what I really loved about that whole show was Amy Sherman Palladino's writing, because it's some of the best material I've, it's probably the best material I've ever done. And, uh, oh God. Amazing, funny, smart, on top of it, and as everybody knows, really fast. So uh, that was just one of the many favorite things. I love doing that show. Lauren and I, uh, the day we met, it was like, okay, I could do this. And she and I became so close and still are close. She really is like a daughter to me, and I really am kind of like a mother to her. We don't spend a lot of time you know, talking to each other or texting or anything like that, but whenever we get together, it just clicks right in again. There's just a real love and trust and and pleasure. You know, we we have the same sense of humor. Uh, yeah, she's she's great. I'm I'm really crazy about Lauren. My all-time favorite episode, actually, the one that tickles me the most because it was so different. There was one uh, where. Uh, Richard, my husband's uh, mother, who was a very difficult woman, uh, had passed away. And uh, I found, if I recall correctly, I found a letter that she had written to him the night before our wedding, I think, begging him not to marry me. I know that the timing of this is particularly awkward since you are to be married tomorrow. No way! But your happiness is too important to me, so timing be damned. She wanted Dad to leave you at the altar. She begged him to leave me at the altar. She begged him in writing, and then she saved the carbon. And uh, that sort of sent me off. He wasn't there to support me because he was so grieving for his mother that during that episode I was drinking. There, I, there was even one scene where I was smoking a cigarette. I, I called it my the Tennessee Williams episode for me. Who was that at the door? It was Jason. Dad needs to sign something. Uh-huh. I mean, she was just out there. She was so un-Emily. Uh, that was great fun. I really had fun doing that one. Favorite moments with Ed Herman. I just loved working with him. We really liked each other so much. I know, I know one of my favorite uh, scenes with him was when we did renew our vows and he, we danced to the song Bill and he said today, I mean, that was your favorite, you know, your favorite song and today you can call me Bill. Emily would tease me saying, if only your name was Bill, then this could be our song. <laughs> well, Emily, for tonight and tonight only, my name is Bill, and this is our song. That was wonderful, you know. Uh, he was such a good actor, and very generous, very professional, but just a sweet, good man. Why is it still cooking? 
first of all, it's very intelligent. I mean, if you the smarter you are, the more you get it. And it's fast. And so you got to pay attention. You don't have much time to laugh because you got to catch up with what's going on. Um, it's funny. I mean, it's, it really is a funny show. But what I decided was that there's really an innate sweetness about it, which sounds kind of icky, but it's not that. There's a, there's a decency about it. Um, and one of the things that men started, when men started watching it, which they weren't inclined to because it was Gilmore Girls and all that sort of thing, uh, is that if you look at the male characters in that show, there's no nasty guy, there's no jerk, there's no misogynist, uh, there's no violence. They're just trying to make their way in the world like all the rest of us. And so there's uh, what there is basically is an innate decency about these people. They're good people. There's, some of them are very strange, but they're, they're good. And I heard a wonderful uh, story last year sometime that very often um, when the troops come back from maneuvers in places like Afghanistan and places that we you know, hear too much about, they very often sit down and watch Gilmore Girls. And I think it's because it's a feel-good place. It's like this is what America is supposed to be. Nothing like a good Gilmore Girls moment, am I right? Hope you like that one. Another great episode of Pop Start Plus, done and dusted. <laughs> I'll be back here again tomorrow with more things you want to know and you need to know. Until then, have a great day. So long, farewell. When you think Texas, you think beef, brisket, and barbecue. But here in Austin, the state's capital, there's so much more than that. We've got folks and chefs from all around the world who are putting their mark on this city's culinary scene. And in fact, the spices and traditions that pay homage to their families are making Austin a hot food scene. It's really kind of this melting pot of different people, their culture, and their food. The creativity and, and the flavor that they put into the food is really artistry, right? It's really the diversity of food. Like, you can get some of everything here. So what keeps Austin weird and tasty? We're about to find out. It's time to head out of Studio 1A and hit the road for a new kind of culinary adventure. Follow me as I taste some of the most iconic foods around the country and meet the families behind them. Together, we're going to learn how a good meal has the power to connect us to our past, our future, and each other. Austin is home to over 1,200 food trucks in food parks just like this one. But we're here for one specific truck. We're here for Tony's Jamaican, serving up fine Caribbean fare to Austin for more than 10 years. Meet food truck owner Tony Scott and his wife Kim. From humble beginnings in Kingston, Jamaica, Tony has made Austin his home since 2003, and he has always had a passion for flavorful food. When did you start cooking? How young were you? 10. Tony's mother, Hyacinth, taught her sons how to be self-sufficient, especially in the kitchen. So you learned from mom early on? Yes. What was it about cooking that you liked? I don't know, I like food at those days. <laughs> those skills learned during childhood would help Tony define his career. For nearly a decade, he worked a small beachside business, serving jerk chicken and drinks to tourists in Jamaica. But after 9-11, tourism to the island stalled. So Tony moved to the U.S. in search of better opportunities, eventually landing in Austin. With construction booming in the state capital, Tony quickly found a job as a painter, but it was his homemade lunches that reignited an idea. You're working, you're, you bring in Jamaican food that you made, some of your friends taste and say, where'd this I, come from? I, yes, I cooked my own food, you know, and they was like, oh, you should, you know, open a restaurant. And it's been 10 years. 10 years now. The 60-year-old chef opened Tony's Jamaican food truck in March of 2012 and his wife, Kim, has been one of his biggest supporters since the very beginning. What was the first meal he cooked for you? Curry chicken and rice, and he invited me over, and once I had it, 
I didn't want to ask for more. You know how ladies are, we try to eat a little bit, maybe the salad kind of thing. Don't want them to know that we that greedy. But it was so good, I asked for seconds. So when Tony says, I want to do a food truck, your reaction? I said a what? <laughs> I said a food what? And I knew nothing about food trucks or however, so it was just all his idea. I just followed along. He said he wanted to do something, he had a vision. I said, okay, let's try it. Despite high praise from friends and family for his grub, Tony's business wasn't exactly booming from the start. When you first opened up, were, was it successful right away? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I came out here 10 o'clock in the morning and I was all here until 3 o'clock the next morning. Mm -hmm. I make $37. Wow. And, you know, I was still happy when I go home and she was like, how much money you make? And I was like, $37. And she break out laughing. <laughs> and I was like, don't worry about it. And next day I come and I make $50 something dollars. And the next day I make $80 something dollars. And I said, okay, I'm seeing increase. Tony taking advantage of the South by Southwest crowds that flocked to Austin in early March. Shortly after the festival, his fledgling business got a big boost with a small write-up. Kim, what, what to you, what was the game changer? What, what put this place over the top? Wow. His presence and his dedication. Jerk chicken and hot sauce. Now, loyal customers are visiting this hot spot daily, decked out with the colors and vibes of Jamaica. From curried chicken and goat to jerk everything, food fans walk away feeling the island love. In 2018, Tony laid down more permanent roots in Texas. You opened up a brick and mortar restaurant. Were you nervous about that? A little bit. It was well, a little. Let me hear. Kim, were you nervous? Oh about yeah, that? I'm so glad uh, you asked me that question. Yes, I was. It was something totally different, and from a food truck going into a brick and mortar. I didn't come from the restaurant industry. I came from the finance side. Coming in, I was like, I was telling Tony, I said. I got this, you know, I can run this, no problem. But oh, no, 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 no. I was ringing the, the red light bell, like, hey, I need some help. It was challenging, but also it was fun. Kim now helping run the business for both locations. Fun Billy always mean a lot to restaurant. You know, sometimes she, she would say, you never know, one day it might be just me and you, you gotta That's show right. me how to cut this meat. from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Top Story with Tom Yamas, weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. I love you too. <laughs> Today is now a podcast, available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts. The day's biggest political stories, with trusted insight now, and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson, streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Your yeah. chicken and oxtail. Thank you Enjoy. very much, sir. Have a great day. You too. God bless. Tony Scott dishes out hundreds of plates to hungry customers each day, but he's best known for one Caribbean specialty. My mother is Jamaican, and in our house, oxtail was king. Yes. yes. Oxtail stew, oxtail and dumpling. Yeah. Oxtail, oh, wow. oxtail, oxtail. My mom is Southern. And she actually mentioned it to me. I said, oxtail. And she just said it was a beef. So I've never really had it. And then when you first had it? It was delicious. And I eat it all the time now. That's the problem. 
isn't it interesting that it was the cheapest cut of meat? Now it's considered wow. a delicacy. You go to all these oh. upscale restaurants, oxtail uh, ravioli, oh. oxtail rice, all of them. It's now everybody's into oxtail. I know. No, I'm scared to go in a restaurant and not oxtail. <laughs> Because right. the, the price is so high. Bring on the oxtail stew! <laughs> Tony frequently sells out of the succulent oxtail, and it was finally time to see and taste why. Welcome to the chop, Mr. Oh, Hong. Oh, yeah. Oh, it smells good. It smells like Jamaica. Oh, <laughs> this is the oxtail, oh. the famous oxtail that everybody go crazy over. Mm -hmm. And these are like the Jamaican product seasoning that we use. This have a good flavor to mm. it. Oh, wow. Tony's oxtails are seasoned with a spice mix that includes garlic powder, dried onion, paprika, black pepper, sugar, salt, and a few chef secrets. This is my product that I make. It's have like onion, it, it, um, bell pepper, um, scotch bonnet pepper. I also have a little bit of garlic in there. So this is like your own concoction? Yes. This is another Jamaican product they call Yava Blue Mountain Coffee. Uh, yeah. Well, they say it's the best coffee in the world. Well, right. this is the Blue Mountain product of burnt sugar. Oh, wow. And this is what we pour on it last, give it that, that good color. Then we just mix this up, make sure you rub it in properly. You want everything to rub into it. Normally, if you take a smell of it, even right now. Oh, yeah. You see, you, you, you can smell that flavor in it and it doesn't even cook. It smells, it smells good. Right. He then lets the oxtails marinate overnight. Then, they're added to a pot with water and slow cooked for several hours. This what it comes out to be. Oh, now we're talking. For you to taste. When I came to Austin. The result, truly out of this world. You see how it fall off the bone. Mm. Oh, yeah. You know, we, we make sure we cook real tender because dental is very expensive. Mm -hmm. And you know, you go to some place, you have eating that meat and you have to be to get it off the bone. You don't do that when you come here. Good thing Tony feels like talking. I'm too busy eating. And it doesn't stop with the oxtails. Oh, is it, Mr. Hall? That's fantastic. This is curry goat right here. Taste that. <laughs> this is the jerk pork. Oh, jerk pork. I've never had jerk pork before. Oh. And that's also oh, wow. my homemade jerk sauce mm. that I made. Whoa. Okay, this is the famous curry chicken. And this is the carrot. Oh, so at least I can say I have my vegetables today. Yes. Look at how tender that chicken is. Tony also serves traditional peas and rice, which brought on a wave of nostalgia. This is black bean. When you open that pot, I thought, wait a minute. Yeah. This is my mother's peas and rice. This is great. And just when I thought I'd had enough? Wait a minute, I, I, I noticed. These are beef patty. I gotta try that. Oh, that's a great press. As a reminder of how far Tony's love for cooking has taken him. If you look up here, you see these little pots? Uh -huh. This pot right here is when I just started out. This is what I usually cook rice into. Wow. The reason why I keep this uh -huh. pot to show people is where Tony's Jamaican food is coming from. Mm -hmm. So what would you tell people who are thinking they've got a dream, they want to start something like you did? What would you tell them? First, you have to motivate yourself to do it. And never give up on your dream. My mama always tell me, don't make nobody tell you you can do nothing. Tony, thank you so much. It's this a pleasure, Harry. It, it, it is nice meeting you. It feels like I'm back in Jamaica. I'm glad you have that feeling. Everything's going to be all right. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Today is now a podcast. Available every morning. Listen wherever you get your podcasts.
and good evening from New Orleans. Nice to really spend some time with you. Appreciate it. Allie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. A masked killer takes aim at fires. A fatal attraction that leads investigators to turn towards their own. Internal Affairs, a new podcast from Dateline. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. You get one beautiful life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love ya. Love you, too. <laughs> Just a few miles from the hustle and bustle of downtown Austin is Mekon Bistro. It is a spot that's loved by locals and tourists alike for its Vietnamese comfort food. Who's the better cook uh, in the family? Um, I'm not gonna even bother asking my mom about that because my mom is hands down the best cook. <laughs> Chef Will Hyun and his siblings opened Mekon Bistro to honor their mother, Anne Hang, a refugee who fled Vietnam after the fall of Saigon and working tirelessly to provide for her family in the United States. She took a chance to travel across the ocean with nothing in hand, working ever since she's been over here, working from morning to night uh, and still provide us with a hot meal every day. When Macon first opened, Will hoped that his mom would finally stop working, but Anne had other plans. Technically, she's retired, but like I said, she, she would not stay home. Anne's passion for food starting in her home country. In 1972, Anne married Kia Huynh. They had four children in Vietnam and turning to cooking to help support the family. This is my dad and my mom like right before the fall of Saigon. When the Vietnam War ended, the family was looking toward a better future in their homeland. But in 1975, the Viet Cong began to invade Saigon. Anne's husband fled the city first, Will leaving when he was just seven years old. It was scary. We left separately, uh, me with my uncle and my mom with my three sisters that came a year later uh, because if you get caught, you were thrown in jail. Luckily, we made it out. We were rescued by uh, cargo boats, but uh, they rescued us. They took us to the Malaysian refugee camp. Will and his uncle secured refugee status, eventually reuniting with Will's dad in the U.S. In the years spent apart from his mother, Will began experimenting in the kitchen with a little nudge from his uncle. He told me that, you know, there's only two of us. You're going to have to do, you know, do your share. So learn to cook something. <laughs> in 1983, Anne made the journey to the U.S. with her daughters. But adjusting to a new country as refugees was a struggle. When we came over, you know, nothing in our pockets. We, we relied on government assistance a little bit. Luckily, she's a great cook. Uh, so it, it wasn't bad for us at all. But growing up, that's how she you know, shows us that she loved us by you know, putting all that love into the food. The family moving from Houston to Louisiana, 
finding work in the seafood industry. But Will wasn't so happy living in a small town. When his uncle invited him to attend high school in Austin, Will said yes right away. I fell in love with Austin. The beautiful lakes, the miles of trails, the music scene. What's there not to love? <laughs> Austin's vibrant culinary scene struck a chord. After high school, Will found work in several restaurants, dreaming of being able to showcase his mom's cooking. In 2015, the entire family moving to Austin. But Ann still wasn't sure about opening a restaurant. I asked her many, many times in the past to do something like that. She's dead set against it. She said, it's just way too much work. Eventually, Ann agreed to share her recipes for just one reason, her family. She's, she's emotional because like, you know, she basically you know, she's doing everything for her kids. The first dish Will added to the menu? His mom's pho. So pho you know, at a restaurant is basically how we do pho at home. Uh, when we cook pho at home, it's a big pot that's going to feed us for at least three days. Um, we have pho for breakfast, we have pho for lunch, we have pho for midtime snack, we have pho for dinner and follow at night for snack at night uh, until the pot's gone. With the help of his family, Will created several new dishes. Our menu does incorporate a lot of uh, fusion Asian dishes. Um, and that is because of the, you know, the family business. Uh, my, my mom's a cook, I cook, my sister cooks, my brother cooks. Uh, second beef dish was something that I've tried out. I consider myself a Texan. We love beef. It's a dish that my mom and I collaborated together to, to put out. Basically, just tubes of real nice tender beef that's been flashed in a wok. It's been six years since Macon Bistro opened, and Will and his mom still love working together. Làm ăn gia đình thì cái này cũng như giúp cho con thôi. Thầy thấy nó tự xúc động rồi mình nấy vậy thôi chứ mẹ đâu có biết làm sao giờ. Mình thấy nó hy sinh cho con mình được ngày nào thì hãy nấy vậy thôi. Mình thấy nó xúc động vậy thôi. I admire her great. The courage it takes just to make that journey and to just stick with us no matter thick and thin. She's my hero. She really is my hero. A masked killer takes aim and fires. A fatal attraction that leads investigators to turn towards their own. Internal Affairs, a new podcast from Dateline. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. A masked killer takes aim and fires. A fatal attraction that leads investigators to turn towards their own. Internal Affairs, a new podcast from Dateline. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No, do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey, podcast fans, ready to unlock our true crime mysteries? Try Dateline Premium on Apple Podcasts. You'll get early access to originals, plus bonus content, and everything is ad-free. So head to Apple Podcasts now to subscribe. Hallie Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Using food to bring younger generations closer to their heritage happens in families all across America. And it's happening here at Habesha with a husband and wife team who's using their restaurant to bring their daughters closer to their Ethiopian roots. We want more than anything else people to be familiar with not just Ethiopian food, but Ethiopian culture. My name is Ine Fantu. This is my wife, Salama Bebe. We ran an Ethiopian restaurant called Habesha in Austin. 
When it opened in 2013, Habasha was the second Ethiopian restaurant in Austin. People stay coming in here, we give them the food, they said, where's the fork? Your hands. <laughs> Ethiopian food is eaten with injera, a fermented flatbread made with teff, a gluten-free grain. You'll see a family dining and everyone is on their phone eating and really not enjoying the, the, the event. Not you cannot here. do that in Ethiopian restaurants. You have to use your hands, you can't. Both of them. That emphasis on family is everywhere in Habesha, from the Ethiopian art and decor to Yidni and Salam's daughters, who can often be found studying at the restaurant. I think I was like around four years old when we opened, so like this is like my second home. Salam and Yidni were born and raised in different parts of Ethiopia. In the 90s, they left Africa to attend college here in the United States. Yidni immigrating to Texas, Salam to Maryland, where her family owned an Ethiopian restaurant. A chance meeting bringing them together. My dad was visiting a friend, dining at uh, her family restaurant, and she happened to be the waitress. And uh, he overheard a music playing and uh, asked her, hey, uh, where could I get the CD? And she was nice enough to, to grab the CD and hand it to him. But Yidney's dad was thinking about more than music. When he got home, he immediately gave his son a call. And he said, hey, just uh, call her and thank her for me. <laughs> <laughs> when he called me, I was like, I give it to your dad, not for you. <laughs> and then he kept calling me. I was like, OK, I think he's not going to give up. My dad was the uh, one who hooked me up. To him, so. <laughs> they dated long distance before Salam moved to Texas, the couple marrying in 2003. Their daughters, Edel and Azel, are now teenagers. I think we've always been around food. My mom's always cooking. For me, I love her pancakes. She makes <laughs> the best pancakes. Salam left the restaurant industry to focus on parenting, but Yidney knew his wife's heart was in cooking professionally. What I saw in her was the passion to own her own business. I really want to open restaurant and I love the customer service and cooking. In 2012, Yidney and Salam finding the perfect location for their restaurant. Austin is a, a, a very unique town in that there is people from all walks of life. And I think part of the reason that we are successful is because of that diversity. Habesha's menu honors their Ethiopian heritage with many vegetarian dishes from stewed yellow split peas to braised collard greens. They also serve more than a dozen dishes with beef. Texas is, uh, has a lot of people that loves meat, so we have a bigger selection of meat as well. And I think my favorite dish and that is the kutfo, or the steak tartare, when it's uh, done right. That's probably the best dish in the world. It's a ground beef and mixed with butter and spices. When the pandemic hit, Habesha's popularity helped save them from closure. And I said, okay, this is it. I, I think we're gonna fall down now. And then people, they support us. They love to be here. They send us check. They send us cards. We have a good, good community. The donations from fans kept them afloat until they figured out a to-go plan. Before COVID, takeout business was only three or four percent of our business. And overnight, we had to do 100% of our business. And by nature, Ethiopian food does not take out. So we had to figure out a way to package the food, to market the food. After laying off most employees, the couple had to work nonstop. As the to-go business began ramping up, Edel and Azel pitched in to support their parents and save their beloved second home. I would write down like the orders, like the online orders, and I would like put them in the kitchen and cleaning, washing the dishes, cutting the injera, like folding it, boxing up to the orders. They did a lot and they're part of the reason why we're still around, so I'm sorry I get a little emotional when I talk about them, but uh, yeah, they're, uh, they're incredible, they're uh, just uh, a love of my life. 
One of the things that we instill in them is knowing who they are, uh, where their parents came from, and learning the culture, learning the food. Salam is looking forward to a busier future at her dream restaurant. I want to uh, grow this business, and a lot of people, they never had Ethiopian food. They had Chinese food, Italian food, or Indian food. So they don't know about Ethiopian food. I'm really proud of her because like she she gets frustrated at times, but she doesn't let that like stop her. A really big inspiration to me. Whenever things get hard, you just keep going. The best part working with your partner is the fact that you're there for each other. To comfort each other when it's down and uh, to be there when your partner needs you. The best part of it, he knows what I can't do. He covered the same thing. He cannot cook. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, she can handle it. With Austin's welcoming atmosphere, it's no surprise that more chefs are putting down roots in this fast-growing city. It's everything from James Beard award-winning chefs and taqueros and even home cooks. The thing that makes a food scene good is different cultures meeting each other and being able to influence each other. The fact that anything is possible is what makes Austin such a cool place. One thing that rings true here in Austin, no matter your background or culture, there's room for everyone at the table. I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post, and each week I'm here with the must-have fashion and beauty products at a price you'll like in Style Finder. I'm Shop All Day contributor Makon Jovu, and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share all the buzzworthy products sweeping social media and influencer trends. I'm lifestyle expert and founder of PSA Made This, Eric Adamasek, and I'm here with products and projects you could buy to DIY. The best part is, Anyone can do it. This is Shop All Day Tips and Tricks. Hi, I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post, and we're back today with another episode of Shop All Day. Now, today's show is all about revealing our tips, tricks, and products to help you stay organized, out the door, and looking good while doing it. From the classic button down that will have you looking effortlessly cool, to adorable pouches that keep your snacks or accessories in one place. We've also got makeup tips and tools from a pro and fun ways to elevate what's in your closet for an easy refresh. And remember, see that QR code at the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Let's start with one of my favorite multitasking fashion hacks ever. This oversized white button-down from American Eagle. You can style it in endless ways, and it goes with virtually everything in your closet. So you can wear it tunic style over leggings or a mini skirt. And I also love that new sort of trend where we tie it at the waist with skirts or trousers. I mean, truly, the possibilities are endless, and you can choose from 11 sheet colors and patterns, from the perfect classic white to sleek pinstripes, plus it is such a great price. On to another effortless multitasker that has become the darling of high-end designers and was seen all over the runways. Yes, that is the classic white tank, which can also be worn under our oversized button down. Now, this menswear inspired staple has become the it underpinning of the season. And you can wear it as a layering piece or wear it on its own with everything from jeans to menswear inspired trousers to midi skirts and more. Plus, it comes in 14 different colors. And now for a footwear trick. When you need a stylish pair of flats to switch into if your feet need a break from heels. And not only are these flats incredibly stylish, but they are foldable and portable. I mean, look at that. They're made out of a flexible and breathable mesh knit material that allows you to fold the shoe in half and just throw it in your bag. So the next time you're looking for some fashionable relief from your heels, 
Just reach in your bag and voila. Plus, this pointed toe ballet flat silhouette has been a huge trend in its own right, making this shoe a chic option to wear anytime. You can choose from, of course, my favorite leopard, and solids to even a cap toe. And again, so affordable. Next, let's get organized with some of the most adorable storage pouches I've seen in a long time. I mean, have you ever seen a cuter take on a snack or makeup bag? I'm a huge fan of the preppy varsity letter trend and we've been seeing it everywhere. Now we've got two styles here. First, check out this great clear zip wristlet pouch. And these are perfect for carrying really anything you need to corral while you're on the go or traveling. And it's so useful that these are clear. I mean, you know, when you're searching for that one item, it makes it so much easier to grab. And if you're looking to stylishly organize your makeup or beauty products and accessories, we've also got some equally roomy makeup bag options. Here we've got our varsity letter patches spelling out hair and skin and face, and I love the happy candy colors. Next, we've got a skincare hack that will shake up your beauty routine and help you get lots more mileage out of your favorite products, all while adding a little luxury and a little fun. So this is the Noonie Marshmallow Whip Maker. I mean, don't you just love the sound of that? And it's TikTok famous. Yes, tons of TikTokers are using this clever gadget to transform their regular cleansers into a fluffy foam in seconds. Now, one of our Shop Today editors tried it for herself and gave it a big thumbs up and says it was super easy to use. So here's how it works. It comes in two pieces. Now, the brand says you only need to add a pearl-sized amount of cleanser to the cup. Then you fill the water up to the dotted line and then Pump up and down until you see a frothy whipped marshmallow like foam. I really love that foam cleanser because it whips up so light and so airy. So this is a real winner. Now we covered skincare, let's do hair. Now if you've been looking for a styling tool that will help you create salon worthy curls and waves while you're on the go, have we got a solution for you. Meet the Travel Curling Iron from cult favorite brand, Harry Josh Pro Tools. And this innovative travel size styling tool is super lightweight and ergonomic. It weighs just 6.4 ounces according to the brand and measures about 10 inches total length with a four inch barrel. Plus, this is one of my favorite things. Check it out, it's got a 360 degree swivel cord, which is so helpful because I do not like it when my cords get tangled. And as an added bonus, it has universal voltage, which is excellent for worldwide travel. And I'm a big fan of its heat resistant tip, which the brand says helps you style without burning your fingers. Okay, so this next beauty trick is one of those items that completely changed the game for me when it comes to my nails. I have never been able to paint my own nails until I was introduced to Olive and June's The Poppy. And now I can, easily, even using my left hand. I mean, it truly is a genius and bestseller for a reason. All you do is you just pop this on top of your favorite nail polish and suddenly you've got a larger handle with a comfy grip. So what it does is it really just kind of gives you more control and you can paint more even steady strokes no matter which hand you're painting. You've got to try this. It's like a pro manicure right in your own home. Now you're gonna love this next one because we've all probably been there losing a favorite ring because it's too big and slips right off your finger. I mean, it's just the worst. Well, for under $10, we've got an easy solution that will make sure your rings fit perfectly. This is a favorite of one of our Shop Today producers, and she uses this every day. Now, these little guys are actually ring size adjusters, and they're designed to prevent your ring from slipping off your finger and they're virtually invisible when you're wearing them. I mean, check this out. 
you can't even tell. And they come in a pack of eight assorted widths to fit most strings for both men and women. And I love these because they are soft and flexible and they're really, really easy to use. And you find one that's just slightly wider than your ring and then you just simply clip it into your band. And lastly, tiny cases for your phone and phone accessories have been trending in a big way and I'm always delighted when we come across accessories that marry fashion and function. So these are fit, look at this, with a lobster claw clasp that allows for easy hooking onto your favorite bag or your backpack or even your belt loop. And they also come with a gold key ring. So you can use this as a key ring as well. And they come in two versatile colors, the millennial pink and the cream. Now let's run through all the products one more time. We've got the American Eagle oversized button down, the old navy first layer tank top, the flexible flats, the makeup and storage bags, the facial cleanser whip maker, the Harry Josh Pro Tools travel curling iron, the Olive and June nail polish handle, the ring size adjuster, and the tasseled AirPods case. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. That's it for Style Finder. Up next, Mako and Logu is talking to makeup pro Ashley Glazer to learn the secret tips and tricks she uses on her celebrity clients. You get one beautiful life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm gonna go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> now tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We were witness to history, and I know we felt so privileged and so touched to be there. Josh had a pretty good season last year. Yeah. Was, is there a part of you that takes a little bit of credit for it? Yeah, of course. Oh. Oh. Out. Good morning. Welcome to you today. I love mornings. They're full of possibility. And how you start your day sets the tone for the whole day. We feel like we're right there with you. Because every day we start our morning so you can take on yours. The day's biggest political stories with trusted insight now and expert analysis now. A daily look at the politics behind the headlines. Meet the Press Now, streaming weekdays at 4 p.m. on NBC News Now. Open your eyes, you get to decide. How's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day. Lighten your load every single morning. Hi there, welcome back. I'm Makon Jovu, and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders and they'll share their favorite products and the must have items to shop for right now. And don't forget the QR code at the corner of your screen. Use the camera on your smartphone and scan it to shop these products. Today, we're sharing our favorite tips and tricks and the products that make life just a little bit easier. And I am so excited to have celebrity makeup artist Ashley Glazer joining me in the studio to share some of her pro tips and tricks that she's learned throughout her career. Hi, Ashley. Hi. I'm so excited that you're here. Yay. 
Yay. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> you know, I'm so inspired by your journey. You are a makeup artist, but you're also on-air talent as well. Yes. If there's anyone who's watching and wants to do the same thing that you're doing right now, what advice do you have for them? Do makeup on as many people that would allow you to touch them. Talk about your hopes and dreams to people that you meet, whether it's somebody sitting next to you at the nail salon or a friend or someone that you know who's in a position that can maybe help you climb that next step on the ladder, but always be positive and be vocal about what it is you want to do. That's such good advice. I mean, you do brides, you do red carpets. What's yes. the one technique or tip and trick that you have to have when you do red carpet makeup? Um, you have to make sure that everything 360 degrees is fully blended in. Yeah. Behind the ears, the neckline, the hairline. Um, you want to make sure that there's no hard lines at oh, okay. all. And that you're mat like in the right places. Making sure you powder like in between the, the brows where like we sweat right around the nose, oh. like the corners of the mouth, the chin, and then sort of leaving like this shiny a little bit so that you, way it still looks real. What time-saving tips do you have for people? Okay, one is definitely use like an all-encompassing stick, like a bronzer stick, so that way you can put it underneath your eyes like a concealer, dab it, and then you can sort of go in and apply it with a brush to get a different finish without having to fumble around in your bag looking for different products. Ooh, that's a good tip. I love a good bronzer. I use it to contour. Yes. All right, speaking of contouring, this bronzer, I guess you can call it contour for yeah, your legs. Yeah, absolutely. It's so this is from Makery Beauty. It's an in the buff body bronzer. Okay. So it has like this really luminizing gold tint to it. So it gives an illusion of perfect, beautiful skin. Mm. So it has like ingredients like aloe that hydrate, glycolic acid that actually exfoliates. Mm -hmm. So it buffs you and bronzes you. So you put it on, I put it on my legs to cover like any cellulite or any insecure areas. Mm -hmm. But what I love, so I'm wearing like white, like a faux leather dress today. Like it literally does not. Move. Yeah, look and at that. I test it on myself always before I do anything on my clients. Mm -hmm. What I love is like, it's still wedding season, fall, so many events. It doesn't get any glitter particles on the men's tuxedos or suits. Which, or your white dress. Or your white dress. So that's really, really nice. It's amazing. Okay. And it showers right off, so it's not a self-tanner. I love that. And you can also use it pretty much all year round. Yes. Let's talk about another item that you can use all year round. This eye cream. So you were telling me that you can use this eye cream to do what? This is the magic eraser of makeup artists. Okay. This is Fast Response Eye Cream from MAC. If I don't have this in my little set bag when I'm with a client or on a job, <laughs> I freak out. It cleans up any mistakes, any mascara, smudges. If you're having trouble getting that perfect wing eyeliner, mm -hmm. you can just put it on a brush or on a Q-tip and you can just like snatch that line perfectly. It cleans up the sides of the lip when you're doing a red lip. And it has ingredients like cucumber, aloe, green tea, apple extract. And a little bit goes a long way. So you don't yeah. have to use smallest, a lot the smallest to amount. see those results. Smallest amount. Okay, now we talk about tips and tricks and I feel like this next product from Maybelline is great. I love how affordable it is, but can you tell me all the different ways that we can use it? Okay, so it's this is just like a traditional shape slim fit brow pencil, comes in a variety of shades. Okay. So what I found as a hack, as a makeup artist, and this is something I've done on myself, mm -hmm. is your brow color that you use is usually matching like your natural hair color. Right. So it's like a shadow. And if you're in a pinch for a lip liner, you can use a brow pencil to shape and contour your lips. Stop it right now. The same color that the you use on your color. brows, you can use on your lips? Yes. Okay. Because it will it naturally, so use it like, Right here? Yeah, okay. on the under. I don't have a mirror, you guys, so I'm <laughs> doing it based on what the makeup artist is telling me. <laughs> to contour around, do like to shape the cupid's bow, mm -hmm. that little V, pinch the outer inner corners, and then a little bit on the bottom to make your lips look really full. Wow. Put on a regular lip balm, mm -hmm. your lips will look huge. I love that. I can use it on my brows. Yes. I have the spoolie here on the end. Yes. And I can use it on my lips. Yes. I am sold. You could sanitize it in between. You probably should. Okay. Just okay. Be, you know, sanitary <laughs> rules. I am a makeup artist. You shouldn't go eye to mouth. Pro <laughs> tip. All right. Let's move on to this next product that we have here. So you have these dual ended brushes. So yes. you can use this on your eyes. You can use this as concealer as well. Yeah. So Makeup by Mario. He is one of the most incredible makeup artists in the world. So these are his brushes. And I love that they're dual sided. Yeah. Because you have the tape tapered um, flat end that's really good for applying concealer, mm -hmm. foundation, cream products, anywhere you want to really like that's pack the end. pigment on, the flatter side, that's that end. Uh -huh. And then you have the other side which is really fluffy and it has like a cone shape. So it's perfect for blending in the crease, for blending out cream products or setting powder under your concealer. And you can also use it, it's the perfect shape to contour your nose. Oh, okay, I love that. This is a product that you can use all over all your face, over, And they're synthetic and vegan hairs and it's like, it's under 30 
$30. Ah. I love it. Okay, let's talk about this next product. So this is for using on your skin. Yes. Tell me how you use this and how often should we be getting the blackheads out of our skin, right? This is from Bliss. It's mm -hmm. the blackhead breakdown and you do it like a mask. You can do it up to like five days in a row. Oh, so perfect. I'll give this to a client and be like leading up to your event. Mm -hmm. Do this five days before so that way you have no blackheads so the makeup won't get cakey or chunky oh. on the sides of your nose because it's really like the dirt and oil being like, you can't come in. Absolutely love that. And last but certainly not least, I have a confession to make. I actually never use the eyelash curler. So I was like, why? Tell really? me. Yes. Oh my why God. Why should I start incorporating an eyelash I curler into so my routine? I feel so many people when I'm doing their makeup, it's like, oh, I never do this yeah. anymore. Curling your lashes, it opens up your eyes. I mean, unless your natural lashes are so, so curly that you can't fit it on, it lifts and opens your eyes and you just put on your mascara like normal. You use less mascara, takes less effort. So you use this before, before you actually, yeah. okay. Don't put it on once the mascara is already dry mm. and it just keeps the eye looking open and makes your eye makeup look even more gorgeous because your mascara is like really the star. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's an instant wake her upper. I like this as a tip and trick because again, if you're trying to get out the door quickly to open yes, up your eyes. You don't even need mascara. You can just okay. curl your lashes. This one has a silicone pad, uh -huh. which is like a little bit more bouncy. Uh -huh. And it, most of them come with like a refillable one. So like every three months, you can just pop it in. Ashley, I'm <laughs> sold. I have to admit, I was a little like, I don't know, but I am sold. I'm definitely going to try it. Ashley, thank you so much thank for joining us. Thank you so much for you're having me. You're amazing. All right, you guys. Now let's run through all the products one more time. We have the body bronzer, the MAC Fast Response Eye Cream, the Maybelline Eyebrow Pencil, the Makeup by Mario Brush, the Blackhead Purifying Stick, and the Classic Lash Curler. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Up next, founder of PSI Made This, Erica Domasek, is sharing her clever way to update your accessories plus a DIY project to get you in the mood for fall. Don't go away. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide. How's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day. Lighten your load every single morning. We were witness to history, and I know we felt so privileged and so touched to be there. Josh had a pretty good season last year. Yeah. Was, is there a part of you that takes a little bit of credit for it? Yeah, of course. Oh. A masked killer takes aim at fires. A fatal attraction that leads investigators to turn towards their own. Internal Affairs, a new podcast from Dateline. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Live from Ukraine, from Uvalde, Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world to me. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love ride. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Oh, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm lifestyle expert and founder of PSI Mavis, Erica Damasek. I personally love anything that will make my life easier, and today I'm here to share all of my tips and tricks with you to help elevate your home and style. 
From adding a personal touch to your accessories to making your frames look even more polished, I've got some easy solutions for you. And remember, see that QR code at the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. So let's get to it. Jazzing up simple accessories is a great way to refresh and revive your wardrobe, and we have an easy way to add some special details. Now, right now, it's all about the statement shoe, which is perfect for fall. Now, if you're like me, I have so many white sneakers in my closet. Vans are one of my go-tos. I get them for myself, my kids, my whole family. Now, I know you're thinking, how are you gonna jazz up a pair of Vans? I'm telling you, you don't have to be a designer. All you need to do is click a button and add to cart. Check out these sparkly shoe clips that come in a set. All you have to do is open up the backs and simply clip them to the back and they will stay on and they're so adorable. Right now, designers are showing so many fancy sneakers and they cost a fraction of the price. But if sparkly isn't your vibe, don't worry, I've got something else for you. Getting into the fall, it's all about cozy textures. So we made shoe clips out of little fun pom-poms. Now for this one, you gotta get a little crafty. We're using shoe clips and a little hot glue. You simply put a little hot glue on the back and put right on top and stick it. Now I went ahead and did that, as you can see, they're perfect, nobody will ever know, and you clip them right on. So cute, right? Now also, here's a tip. If you have a shoe that maybe you used last season and you're not into it anymore, revive them, revamp them, because last season's shoe is now a whole new look. Now, get creative with your styles. You can do sneakers like Vans, these are mules, anything really works. I personally am having a bow moment, can you tell? So this one's really cute. I put these on also slides that come in fun patterns and even pearls too. Get creative with your combos and keep in mind, these are not permanent. So you can also switch them out to whatever you're feeling and goes with your look. At the end of the day, your clothes, you can interchange them, but your shoes, that's where I wanna make a statement. Now, speaking about statements, this accessory, it's a beanie, but not just a plain beanie. I wanna use those same pom-poms because they come in a set and it's a perfect way to jazz up a hat. This will take all of 10 seconds. You ready? Okay, now this is my other big tip for you. If you're gonna craft anything at home, you should always own a cordless glue gun. So it's plugged in, it's warm, and it's ready to go. I can walk from room to room, but be careful because it is hot. Now, to make it, all you're gonna do is take your hot glue gun simply put it to the very top crown, as you can see right here. Now be careful, it is hot, so if you're not used to working with a hot glue gun, just take your time. And you're gonna take your pom-pom and simply put it right on top and hold it there for a good 30 seconds until it's secure. This is a fun project to do at home if you invite your girls over, that way everybody can make a hat and they also make for an amazing gift. So cute, right? Perfect way to stand out this fall. Get creative, jazz up your shoes, your hats, you can't go wrong, and you're gonna look really fly. And if you're looking to up your frame game, I have an easy solution that will make all your photos look so chic, it'll look like you bought them from a high-end home store. Now, this is something I actually do in my home. I have plain frames that I upgrade with fabric. Let me show you how to do this. It's super simple. Now, as you can see here, these are just basic acrylic frames. They're all magnetic. They come in so many different sizes. You can get them in sets. But this one we're gonna show you is an eight by 10. And it's so cute, a little picture of my son and I. But instead of having that clear acrylic look, for fall, I went ahead and chose this fun, deep jewel tone purple color. I already pre-cut it using fabric scissors. These are my favorite scissors. These are by Fiskars. They're great for cutting fabric and they come in so many different varieties. You simply place it in the middle. Now, the photo I have is a touch smaller than the frame itself. That way, the color will really pop. I have a little bit of double-sided tape. You simply put it on your, the back of your photo. Place it right in the center. Now, you can eyeball it or you can use a ruler if you really want to get it perfect. But Right there in the center, you'll see how the border pops and you simply take the top. It's magnetic, it actually grabs it itself and that's it. Now keep in mind, holidays are coming up. This is gonna be a great gift. It's super inexpensive. It makes for an amazing present for family members, friends. I'm super into it. Now, this is easy. This one's a little harder, but also really chic. So we get frames that have mats in them. 
right? But they're plain, they're basic, they're white. So I wanna jazz them up and upgrade them. This is a gorgeous chambray fabric that I had lying around. As you can see, it's thin, it's beautiful. I pre-cut it using a fabric cutter. Now, this you wanna cut on a surface, like maybe a cutting mat, maybe even a cutting board. You don't wanna go on your surface because you wanna protect it. But what I did was I pre-cut a piece and you're simply gonna wrap it all the way around using that double-sided tape again, using your scissor even to cut out an X in the center and folding it back. Now go ahead and take a look. I've already done one here. The front looks great. The back, fold it up and just double-sided tape down. It's really easy. And look how great this looks. Now you put your photo in there, put the mat back on it, and this is a frame that looks so high-end People will think you spent so much money when really it could be just remnant fabric you have lying around. I hope you get inspired to make your own high-end frames this fall and jazz up your house. Let's go through all the projects we just did one more time. We've got the DIY hats, the DIY shoes, and DIY frames. And that's a wrap on buying DIY and for our show. It's been so fun showing you our favorites. Tune in next week for all new episode of Shop All Day. Do you see this? See this pizza? You wanna eat this pizza? Too bad, I'm going to. <laughs> I'm Sama Dada. I'm a cookbook author and recipe developer in the plant-based food scene, which is becoming more innovative every day. I'm on a mission to see how startups, restaurants, and chefs are changing the way we see and eat plants. And I can't wait to show you how to bring more delicious dishes into your kitchen. doesn't just love ooey, gooey, and totally decadent cheese. I know you do. Americans truly can't get enough. In fact, we've tripled our cheese consumption since the 70s. Today, the average person here eats a whopping 35 pounds of cheese a year. 35! So it's no surprise that cheese is usually one of the toughest things to give up if you're ditching dairy. But I've got some good news for you. These days, there are a lot of tasty options out there when it comes to vegan cheese. And I'm determined to explore them all. Well, maybe not all, but I've discovered a few really, really good ones. I'm checking out a new type of pizza shop serving up killer pies. Then, I'll be using cashews to make an irresistible dairy-free dip of my own. But first, I'm headed to Riverdale, an artisanal cheese shop making its mark on the plant-based cheese world. Michaela Grobe is the owner and cheesemonger of Riverdale, a vegan cheese shop on Manhattan's Lower East Side. It's the only shop in New York City that exclusively features dairy-free artisanal cheeses. Michaela, thank you for having me. I love a plant-based cheese moment. This is very exciting for me. Tell me about what inspired you to start Riverdale. Basically, I love cheese. Um, I love animals. I became vegan for 40 animals, basically, and when I then started looking around for cheese. I found that, you know, it was, it was out there, but you couldn't really access it easily. Michaela's quest for better vegan cheese started a decade ago, when it was still really hard to find dairy-free cheese that was actually good. While working a high-profile job in the corporate world, Michaela saw an opportunity to open a new type of store. And I thought, wouldn't it be great if there would be one place just like any other tea shop where everything's vegan. And that's kind of where the idea came from. She began reading books on vegan cheese making and took classes with acclaimed vegan chefs. On the weekends, Michaela went through a lot of trial and error in her home kitchen, 
while also crafting a plan to start her own food business. I still had my corporate job and at one point I was like, okay, I think it's time for me to leave the corporate world and really do something about it. I really thought, I want to I wanna try it. If, it. if it fails, it fails, right? But at least I tried it. With enough money saved, she left her job in 2015 and opened Riverdale, named after her two pets, a dog named River and her cat Fidel. But Michaela's mission to make vegan cheese more accessible wasn't just a passion project. It was a pivotal time for a booming business. In 2017, vegan cheese sales hovered around $294 million. By 2022, that figure is projected to reach nearly $600 million. That's a 100% increase. Are you trying to mimic, you know, dairy cheese? Or are you kind of creating something in your own line, in your own world? Yeah. Um, or are you just trying to replicate the experience of buying cheese? Yeah. It's a little bit of, of everything. It's the experience, it's a product that people know, uh, that looks like a brie, that looks like a, a gouda. But then there are also other cheeses that have no equivalent in the dairy world. Riverdale's blue cheese uses the same fungus that creates the iconic navy marbling in the dairy version. But the shop's Vitopian is a cashew and soy-based cheese with a unique texture that's semi-firm yet creamy. The way I like to explain our customers is to not look for like for like um, imitation. It's the same as if you would make a, a gouda from a cow's milk and from a goat's milk. It has the same techniques, the same cultures, but the end product is very different. So it's the same if your base is a cashew nut. The end product's still different, but it's still a cheese, in my, my view at least. Who do you want to be eating this cheese? I mean, definitely a lot of vegan customers, but we also have people that are vegetarian, um, lactose intolerant. So whereas we do obviously speak to the vegan community, um, for me it was also important that we reach out and connect with the non-vegan community. You're targeting the cheese curious. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I appreciate that it's difficult to make the switch because people are afraid of like, oh my God, what am I gonna eat? Michaela has the cheesy answer to that question. In the shop's kitchen, she showed me how to make a few of her handcrafted cheeses. Okay, Michaela, what are we making today? So we're actually making a feta today. It's gonna be a very salty and crumbly and firm one, which is perfect for salads. Vegan cheesemongers use a variety of ingredients to mimic the taste and texture of dairy cheese. Common bases include a combo of nuts, vegetable oils, and soy products. So for this one, we're actually using tofu. This tofu has been frozen first, and then we kind of squeeze out all the liquid so it becomes very dry. Michaela uses firm tofu to create a sturdy feta. It allows the cheese to uniformly slice and dice, but also crumble, just like the traditional Greek cheese. For flavor, Michaela adds Himalayan salt, red wine vinegar, garlic powder, and Greek oregano. Then there are two types of fats. So you're using coconut oil here. Why are mm -hmm. you using coconut and not a different kind of oil or fat? Yeah, I mean, coconut oil um, firms up once it's chilled. Mm -hmm. So it really helps with just making the cheese firmer. All right, so I've got some olive oil here. Mm -hmm. And it's just olive oil with a little bit of oregano in it. And it's just to get a little bit more flavor. And I'm just using a, like a, a tablespoon or something like that. Okay, so we're ready to blend our feta. Mm -hmm. Everyone's gonna become friends in here. Mm -hmm. What are we yeah. looking for for it to be done and how long are we processing for? So we're looking for a very smooth, almost shiny kind of consistency. Even when I think it's done, I usually like to give it another minute or two just to be on the, uh, on the safe side. You can't over blend this. Michaela scrapes down the processor every minute or so to ensure the mixture reaches a smooth, creamy consistency. Then it's transferred into cheese molds. We made two flavors, one plain and one with an olive tapenade center. The cheeses sit in the fridge for two days to firm up. I made some ahead already, oh, really? so we don't have to wait overnight and we can taste them right away. Oh, exciting. So this is what it looks like when you turn it upside down. What? So this is one with the um, tapenade layer, oh. and here is one with uh, sun-dried tomatoes. Wait, this is crazy how firm it is. Yeah. Can we eat them? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. Will you have some with me? I want to so, try this one. Yeah, you what? try that one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. So it's nice and 
salty. Wow, that's crazy. Crumbly. But it doesn't taste anything like the, uh, the, the tofu that we use as a base. It feels very light, but still like dense enough to mm -hmm. feel like, oh wow, like I'm eating something that could really stand up to a dairy yeah. cheese. Yeah. This is so delicious. My mind is blown. You have so many different types of cheeses. Can we try some mm. other ones too? Oh, absolutely. I think when you open your eyes, you get to decide, how's my day going to be? We want to be a way to start your day, lighten your load, every single morning. A masked killer takes aim and fires. A fatal attraction that leads investigators to turn towards their own. Internal Affairs, a new podcast from Dateline. Listen now wherever you get your podcasts. Now Tonight with Joshua Johnson. Streaming weeknights at 8 on NBC News Now. We were witness to history, and I know we felt so privileged and so touched to be there. Josh had a pretty good season last year. Yeah. Was, is there a part of you that takes a little bit of credit for it? Yeah, of course. Oh. For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. You'll get one beautiful so life to live. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold. We have this circle of women that love each other. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Love you. Love you too. <laughs> For breaking news in our changing world, download the NBC News app. At Riverdale, a vegan cheese shop in New York City, owner Michaela Grobe makes two cheeses in-house. She also imports over a dozen varieties from across the country and around the world. I'm genuinely freaking out because this all looks like real cheese. <laughs> like, talk to me about what we're seeing here. So this one is another one of our house-made cheeses. It's, it's, a, it's a blue cheese type and it's aged for about well, two to three months. It's definitely more on the funkier side. The uh, base ingredient here is cashews. Then we have a brie style here. The cultures that are being used for, to create this nice fluffy rind mm. is the same as you would use on a dairy application. This one's uh, from Texas and it actually has um, cashews and rice flour. Oh, what kind of cheese is this? So that's a smoky aged cheddar style, very nice and firm and very strong and uh, deep flavor. And here we have one that's made in New York and it's made from macadamia nuts and hemp. Mm. And it has a little bit, little bit of a kick, a little bit of a spice, something like along the lines of a pepper jack. I'm very excited to try them. How are we gonna assemble it? Can we make like a little cute cheese platter or something Oh yeah, like absolutely. We have a few things that will go really nicely with each of those cheeses. Nice. Riverdale also carries many cheese board essentials, including crackers, jams, and vegan charcuterie. Absolutely. I would have a party just to serve this. It was almost time to dive in, but you already know, my camera always eats first. I think I have to start with the pepper jack because yeah, I love you should. spice. Absolutely. So it is a bit spicy. I'm okay. Yeah, especially the I'm, crust is, is going to be spicy. I'm ready for it. Whoa. Yeah. Once I get started, I just can't stop. Vegan blue with strawberries, anyone? Cheers. Cheers. Oh my god. <laughs> That doesn't make sense. And we had to pair the brie with pear. Michaela, you have changed my world today. This is so <laughs> exciting. Um, Great. And I just can't thank you enough. This is incredible. And I, I hope people really see all the amazing things you're doing with vegan cheese. I'm really happy to have so many more cheese makers. We find so many more cheese makers like every month. There's a new one we start working with. Thank you so much. If you ever need more tasters, I'll be sure to Just like, yes. hit me up. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll be here. <laughs> I've saved a little room for my next cheesy stop. A New York pizza shop firing up plant-based pies for their screaming fans. You'll get one beautiful so life to live. What are you gonna do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't 
stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Oh, yeah. I love that, too. <laughs> Jackson Now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. Texas, from Mayfield, Kentucky. To cover the news, you have to be in it. This is how so many towns and cities are protecting themselves. You can actually see they're pushing the gates open. Was there a school officer on campus? That's what we've been told. No. Do you remember any tornado as bad as this one? You look at this and you're thinking, we're not going to have power for weeks, if not months. Exactly. Every night, it's your news playlist. Top Story with Tom Yamas. Weeknights at 7 on NBC News Now. Allie Jackson now, weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. I live in Brooklyn, and there are few foods that scream New York City more than pizza. But is pizza really pizza without cheese? Vegan cheeses may be delicious, but capturing the melty, gooey goodness of mozzarella is tough. And that's obviously essential for a perfect pie. Meet one of my favorite vegan pizza spots, Screamers. Come on. Are you kidding? Is it a joke? It's not a joke. It's vegan. <laughs> Open since 2016, Screamers is similar to many iconic slice spots all over the city. Head chef Joy Strang has worked at Screamers for four years. She developed popular pies on the menu, like the truffle scream, a pizza covered in oyster and cremini mushrooms, plant-based parm, arugula, and a drizzle of fragrant truffle oil. Tell me about the inspiration behind Screamers. I mean, the inspiration was literally just that. It was a bunch of vegans sitting around wanting to um, have a really good slice of New York pizza, and thus Screamers was born, you know? What was your background before Screamers? Uh, so I spent a lot of time as a chef for a Mexican restaurant and I've also worked in American fine dining. But I also find that like cooking vegan food, you just take the same methods that you use for cooking anything and just apply it to vegan ingredients. Screamer serves all types of pies, from classics like pepperoni and a fully loaded Supreme, to mashup flavors, like a Reuben pie topped with spiced seitan and Thousand Island dressing. They have two locations in Brooklyn and a dedicated following on social media. How far has somebody traveled to get some Screamers pizza? We get people from all over. Brazil um, is notable, uh, Germany. And I always feel badly for people that are traveling from out of town when they come here because then they eat the pizza and then they have to think about the pizza when they go home. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm really sorry for you. You ruin people. Yeah. What do you say, Joy, to people who are skeptical of vegan cheese? Because obviously cheese is a huge part of pizza. I'd say, honestly, that's probably our number one challenge is people come in and they're like, oh, I don't know about the cheese, but vegan cheese has come a long way. You know, um, before there weren't as many options, but I think there's so much more focus and emphasis on making things more delicious these days as opposed to just having a alternative. Screamers uses a specific vegan cheese to replicate the texture of dairy cheese. So we use a uh, BioLife mozzarella. Oh, nice. Yeah. So we've tried many, many cheeses, but this seems to be the one with the best smell, the best, best mouthfeel, I think. What is it made out of? Coconut oil and potato starch is the base of it. So again, it's very allergy friendly, um, no soy, no nuts. Screamers also makes two cheeses in-house, an almond-based Parmesan and an ultra creamy ricotta. Today we're gonna make our almond ricotta, um, which goes on a lot of our four pizzas. Yay, yeah. I'm excited. 
Okay, so I see you've soaked the almonds to soften them, but they're also blanched as well. There's no skin on them. So why is that happening there? Yeah, because the skin tends to, one, um, give you like a little bit of a, a different mouthfeel. It's, um, it's a little bit, uh, yeah, a little bit grainy and also just for color purposes. Okay, should we get started? What are we doing first? So we're gonna put in our um, soaked and blanched almonds into the Roboku. All right, and then okay. next we're gonna go with our salt. Lactic acid goes in there next. Why are we using lactic acid here? So it gives it a little bit of a tang, you know, that um, you know every cheese tends to have. We achieve that by putting the lactic acid in there. All right. Yeah. And then this is the blended oil. It's a little bit of vegetable oil and a little bit of um, olive oil. And then we're just gonna snap the lid on here. The mixture blends for a couple minutes. Once everything gets creamy, it's time for a taste. Are we done? Yeah, we're looks done. It's delicious. You want to give it a try? I really would. All right. I thought you never asked. Yeah, for sure. Mmm. Pretty good, right? Very creamy like ricotta. Joy, it feels wrong to have cheese without the pizza. Sure. So what can we put this almond ricotta on top of? Well, we're going to show you one of our most popular pizzas, like we mentioned before, the buffalo cauliflower. Um, yeah, so we'll use the cheese that we just made for that. All right, what are we starting with? So um, this is the, our dough. We make all of our dough in-house. I'd say the most challenging part about making pizza at home is probably stretching the dough, mm -hmm. right? So you want to start by flouring both sides so it doesn't stick. Um, and then we're going to press out all of the air bubbles. And while pressing out the air bubbles, you're kind of like keeping it in this circle shape. So it makes it a little bit easier to, uh, to stretch and still be formed into this like perfect, beautiful circle. All right, so now that we've gotten our air bubbles out here, we're gonna flip it over on our hand and start the stretching process. <laughs> it's like you literally do this in your sleep. I know, I mean, I probably could, I probably have. All right, so wow. there we are. Did so. you just see that though? That was like in two seconds. What is the trick to spreading sauce pr appropriately okay. and well? So you want to, I always start in the middle and then I, I circle out like this and I push, um, push the sauce to the sides. This is like a little bit of like hypnosis going on. <laughs> yeah. So take a big handful of the cheese and I will say, I'm gonna give you a little cheese spreading advice here. Okay. You wanna start high and then just kind of sprinkle it all around so you get an even coat, okay? Okay, all right. You're doing great. Okay, yeah, I was looking for affirmation really quick. <laughs> yes, I, you're doing a great job. Can you see that? The pizza gets a few generous dollops of that luscious ricotta. How does this bake off? Well, it actually gets a little bit crispy on top, which makes it so, so delicious. Okay, what's next? All right, so then we're going to put our uh, buffalo cauliflower on top. Oh. Yeah. Okay, tell me about how you prepare the cauliflower. Okay, for sure. So we make our own buffalo sauce here, and we take, um, we break down cauliflower and we cook the cauliflower in buffalo sauce. How hot is this oven and how long are we keeping our pizza in there for? So we keep the oven between 500 and 550, um, and it's gonna cook for about six, six, six or seven minutes. Okay. Yeah, so super quick. Quick. Yep, and then it'll be nice, crispy, and uh, golden brown on the edges, and that's how you know it's done. The seven minute wait, it felt like eternity. How's it doing in there? Oh, she, oh. she, she beautiful. All right, let's oh. take one more peek at the bottom here. Oh. What do you think? I think it looks gorgeous. I think she's What beautiful. do you think? I think I think she's ready. Joy, I've got to document this process. Okay. It's just simply a part of my brand. Okay, do it. All right, you ready? I'm ready. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> that looks so fire. Are you kidding me? I know, right? The pizza is served up in true New York style. You're not eating off of a paper plate. Are you eating pizza? Are you even eating a Are New York you? pizza? No. Amazing slice job. Boom. Come on. <gasps> what do you think? Stop. So good, right? This tastes like real pizza. Yeah. I don't even want to say real pizza. It just tastes, tastes like, like regular pizza. dairy pizza. Yeah. It's so good. It's so delicious. Yeah. What does it mean to you, Joy, to be creating this traditional New York slice that's vegan, that gives so many more people an option? It's awesome. I mean, when people come to New York, when people think about New York, one of the things they, they think about is pizza. You know, they want to check that box off. Oh, I had a New York pizza. So it's really, really awesome that we've given the option to every single person 
to be able to do that, you know? You know what I also really like uh, to hear is um, people who have dairy allergies or even parents with their children that have dairy allergies and they are always so happy that we exist because otherwise they wouldn't be able to have pizza and like uh, such a big part of a kid like childhood is eating pizza, right? Yeah. Yeah. We do a lot of like uh, little kids pizza parties and stuff like that, cute. you know, it's so <laughs> cute. So, you know, it's like that little bit of normalcy. It's like, oh, I can't have dairy, but still have really good pizza. What are some of your favorite reactions from vegans and non-vegans alike who try your pizza for the first time? Like a non-vegan reaction, they are like, oh, it's actually good. And you're like, I told you so. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, we have a lot of people that come in and this is their favorite pizza spot and they are not vegan. If you can't travel to Brooklyn for a screamer's pie, don't worry. I've got your dairy-free cheese cravings covered. Up next, I'm making my super creamy cashew queso. Hallie Jackson now. Weekdays at 5 on NBC News Now. You get one beautiful so life to live. What are you going to do? This show is so fun, but having you as a positive force means really the world. Jenna doesn't stop till it's sold, okay? We have this circle of women that love each other. I decided I'm going to go with the rhythm of life. And you love riding the I way. love riding the way. This is a moment we're in right now. This is really electric. Uh, yeah, I love you too. We were witness to history, and I know we felt so privileged and so touched to be there. Josh had a pretty good season last year. Yeah. Was, is there a part of you that takes a little bit of credit for it? Yeah, of course. Oh. One of my favorite things to make when I'm having friends over, if I want a really delicious snack by myself, is my roasted jalapeno queso. You might be wondering, a plant-based version of queso? Are you okay, Sama? But to that I say, I'm perfect. Chile con queso is a Tex-Mex classic that's traditionally made with a great melting cheese and green chilies. We're using cashews as the base and nutritional yeast for a cheesy, savory flavor. And jalapeno, I can't forget about our spice. It's super creamy and cheesy. You won't even miss the dairy. Because I like a little spice in everything that I do, we're adding jalapeno to our queso. I like roasting the jalapeno to get that really smoky, delicious flavor. You've got your jalapeno, drizzle it generously with some olive oil. I like to just rub the jalapeno in the oil just to get it nicely coated. All right, say goodbye to our jalapeno. It's about to get roasted. See you later. The jalapenos roast at 400 degrees for about 10 minutes until lightly charred. Look at our jalapeno. She's cooled. It's blackened on the outside. Also, you'll notice that when you let the jalapeno cool, it's gonna get a little wrinkly, that's totally fine. My secret weapon in creating a really delicious and creamy queso, cashews. I soak them either overnight or flash soak them for an hour in hot water. This allows the cashews to expand. They really get nice and pliable and soft. The first thing I'm gonna do is drain my cashews. Now I'm just gonna add them to my blender. Cashews are in, now I'm just gonna add two cloves of garlic. You might be wondering how I'm gonna make this queso cheesy without the cheese, and to that I say nutritional yeast. Nutritional yeast is one of my secret weapons in my plant-based repertoire. It's really amazing for creating a savory and cheesy taste to everything you add it to. Beautiful. This is such a super simple recipe, it's actually crazy. Everything's going into a blender. We're gonna add some salt and some freshly ground black pepper. And don't forget our gorgeous jalapeno. Now to help everything come together, I'm just adding a little bit of vegetable broth. You could use water, I just like using veggie broth because it adds some more taste, some more flavor, and we love more flavor when we're cooking, right? 
beautiful. Now we get to blend. Are you excited? I'm excited. All right, let's blend. All right, let's check the texture. <gasps> Creamy, velvety, queso-y, not a word, but I have my own dictionary. I don't know if you knew that. It's beautiful. My chips have arrived. I'm ready to plate my queso and I'm very excited about it because then I get to eat it. And that's what we're all here for. Check out this texture, okay? <gasps> Are you checking it out? You sure? Creamy, cheesy, but no cream or cheese, crazy. All right, I want this to look really cute, so I'm just gonna smooth the top out, the back of my spoon like so. A very simple garnish, just a little bit of pepper. Could you believe it could be that easy? Cheesy, delicious, creamy queso, no dairy involved. Now I get to eat it. Here I go. Chip ready to take a dip. Hmm. Do you see that? Wow. Ooh, that heat is so good. Mm. This is in my cookbook, so I've obviously made this a bunch of times, but it's so good every time. Queso is perfect to share, so luckily I have my whole crew here. So guys, I don't know what you're doing. Get in here. Come on. That's more like it. <laughs> Teamwork, awesome. Love that for us. I hope this showed you can make really creamy, delicious, and cheesy recipes without the dairy. It's amazing. You have to try it. Not to be cheesy, or to be cheesy, I hope this inspired you to try cheese without the dairy because it is just as delicious and versatile. Good morning, it's Thursday, an alarming new move from North Korea overnight. Yeah, the U.S. is responding, moving a warship